What's up, everyone? And welcome down to an exclusive episode of Zetro's Toxic Vault. Now, we've been doing this show for about a year and a half, and we've had a lot of guests on. But I got to say, I'm as excited as all of you guys are to have this conversation as you guys are going to be to listen to this conversation. This man next to me spent 10 years fronting the band Exodus in 2008 has started his own band, which I love his band, amazing band, Generation Kill. This man could tear apart a VW motor in, what is it, 15 minutes? No, nah, it takes a little longer than I can take one 30, out of the car. 30, 30 minutes or something, <laughs> a jack of all trades. He's got a lot of go things going on, and we're going to talk about them. Welcome down to the Zetro's Toxic Vault, Mr. Rob Dukes. Hey, man. How you right doing, on. brother? Good, good to man. have you in. Good to see and you. And I have yeah. uh, so many requests i mean because a lot of my show is i what i tell them is after every episode leave me comments yeah. and leave me and let me know what you think and this more just like any social media we read them all and i mean get dukes on get come on zed you can get dukes on I'm like well i liked when they come through town but dukes is like i think he's in arizona now so yeah. we worked it out i mean we've been talking about this for Probably Eight close months. to a year, oh, yeah, but we yeah. almost did it in in April. But we almost then, did it in April, and, and then, then the COVID thing happens, and I kept yeah. telling people, "Wait till you see who I got coming." Yeah. Like who? And, and some of my oh, close friends. You know what? Going, I didn't tell anybody. I really? told like one person. I told my manager. It was it. I was like, "I'm not telling anybody. I'm just gonna. I'm when this fucking because I really thought. Like first off, I want to thank you for having me on. Of course, you thanks know, for there's coming. So in. many. Because the truth is, me and you actually never sat down and talked. Maybe a few minutes here and there. Yeah, right. Over all those years, we never. We never were in the same room no. for more than a few minutes. It was always backstage. It was never like I get sit down and get to know you. Kind of yeah. never. You yeah, know? I think and a little bit more so during the chapel things when we did. Yeah, the we chapel. Did a little, yeah, we, did, we talked about motorcycles. Than, yeah. we talked about yeah, motorcycles. We had definitely. yeah, yeah, it was, that was a cool night. That was a good, that was a good night. That, that was a good fucking great night. That was so much fun, and it was healing for me. Yes, yeah, so I'm glad. You know? I'm glad. It really because, was because you know, I mean, knowing knowing the guys as well as I do, and they they love you to death, and yeah. it's, and they you know they'll do anything for you to this day, and you know yeah, that you know? I do. When you know Gary, you call yeah. Gary, hey, Gary, and he'll eat or something. He's right there, Tom, <laughs> yeah. Jackie, there, you know, they're they're yeah. there for you now. You know, like I said, I'm, I'm yeah. I, the biggest misconception is the biggest misconception. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, it'd be great. You know, it's, you know it's, it's if we got it's like if you put up oh Dukes and Zach got in a fist fight. And yeah. that's the blabbermouth lead, man. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the whole idea of the, uh, <laughs> of what the, the rock em, sock em robots before this thing aired. We want to make them think that, you know what I mean? And that's why that's why we did that. You oh, know that's what I mean? Fucking so awesome. that's, Good idea. No talkie was just us doing the remember when we did that? We the rock em, sock em robot thing. Uh. So that's why we did that. So um and you you actually you're in Arizona, you're in around Phoenix area. I live right? in Chandler, Chandler, uh, Chandler, Arizona. Chandler, Arizona. And like I was saying during the uh to the little the little diatribe monologue. You build, you're building cars and you're, yeah. you're customizing uh, automobile. That's currently, I mean, you're still doing Generation Kill and we're yeah, going to talk yeah. about that because I heard some songs that you sent that are fucking great, man. Thanks, and man. Really, really good stuff, I, which I mean, I really need to encourage you to hit that a little harder yeah. because it's really, really good stuff. You have a great band, your vocal approach on that. But again, we'll get into that. Talk about the, this cars thing because you, cause you uh, love doing that. And I, you, always, I always did it. Ever since I was like, you know, 15, I, I've always, uh, my first car was a volkswagen so um but i've had a bunch of hot rods chevelles had a gto i had a you know le mans i had a buick skylark i had a all 60s 70s model cars yeah all late 60s early 70s i had a 73 uh firebird at one point i had a you know i did a couple i did a you know and i always it was always just like me by myself in my garage you know um <clears throat> and then when uh exodus ended i needed a gig and i, I really know what i was going to do so um i hit up Roger Moret from Agnostic Front. Uh -huh. And um, I was like, Roger, man, I'm living in Arizona, and you're the only fucking person I know. And I just lost my job, so I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. I just got married, dude. I right. had, like, I was, like, you know, and I was going, you know, I was trying to tell my wife, like, like, like I was telling her, oh, everything's going to be fine. We're going to be fine. But in my head, I was losing my shit. And then uh, Roger says, well, I, don't, I got this one friend, you know, Steve, who's got a shop, and they do Volkswagens. I go, oh, that's fucking perfect. So I go over there and I basically took a job sweeping the floors for the first week, and then and then uh, you know um, you know after you know call like a month or so they were like oh I guess he's he's gonna do you know it's like the garage etiquette you know he's gonna hang and do this and it was hot as fuck too I just moved here it was like 120 degrees it was fucking brutal man and I was it was humbling as fuck 
So I took out garbages and swept floors and picked up after, you know, and then, um, so then I, he's, I started wrenching on shit and then, uh, so then, uh, I bought a $10,000 toolbox and $10,000 worth of tools and I fucking started wrenching. And so the shop is called Doug's Bugs. It's in uh, Mesa, Arizona. Um, but we have like a online store and we do, but we do, we are like the premier shop in, in Arizona. Like, you know, there's, there's some shops, but we're the shit. We do everything from, um, full pan off restorations to off road to sand rails to, you know, uh, you know, do you do body work as well? I mean, like we do everything. We do, do everything do. is, everything is in house. Everything uh-huh. is. So we build motors, trans. Um, so talk about your mom and dad. Right. Were they listening to music? Who, where did, where did the music <clears throat> thing come in? Because I've actually spoke to some friends of yours that you didn't know. I spoke to some friends of yours in New York that I had met that are also still friends with the band. And they were saying, they were telling me how they knew that you would always be doing this. They knew that you would always be no in shit. entertainment sometime. I can't remember who it was. It was one of, the, one of the first tours I had come back to. And they had come there. And um, they said, oh, hi. And I've, I've never met him before. And they're like, we're friends with Rob. I'm like, great. How you doing? What's the cool? And like, you know, and they were sitting down and they were very proud of you. And they were saying, you know, we knew Rob would always, always, you know, do really good and do this and stuff like huh. that. So is that... Where did that come from? That, that if your friends were telling mm. that, did, did, was your was it? Did you I don't brothers? know, man. So like, I mean, to start, like, I was a, I was a fucking nerd, dude. I was like a dweeb. Like, I I wasn't. I didn't have any friends. I, I mean, I moved around a lot when I was younger, younger. So which made me, <clears throat> honestly, it, it made me, uh, it made me uncomfortable in my own skin for a long time. Introvert, total introvert, really. But I also. So that's kind of what forced me into music, you know what I mean? Because I was, it was I had I had books. I, I would I wasn't on really watch TV, so it was I, I read, I had I had comic books, I read, and I had music. And music was, I mean, I remember being there's pictures of me like that my mom has. I'm like, or my dad has. I'm like four or five years old, and I'm sitting in front of the stereo with headphones on, and just just listening to the music. That's, what were they listening to? So. I remember stealing my mom's Dark Side of the Moon. Okay, so they were listening to. Oh, like my parents were hippies. My parents. Okay, were, I cool. was like, they were like seventeen when okay, I was born. Okay, cool. So they, my dad was listening to like Trace Ombres. Like, so really? I, wrote, I tweeted that the other day that Zip Ties and and ZZ Top reminds me of my father. Wow. That, especially the song Tush. Really. Or, right. Yeah. Uh, so whenever I hear, I, I think of my dad. Wow. You know what I mean? So. And my mom was more a, a like a Pink Floyd, like she liked blues. So she like uh, so I would. My uncle Logan, who was a musician too, he was a bluegrass musician. He gave me um, he gave me a stack of records one time, and he said, "Keep what you want, and then give me back what you don't like." And I I'll tell you what I gave him back. I gave him back Yes, Grateful Dead. Uh. And like, for some reason, like blood, sweat, and tears. I'm like, nah, I don't like too any progressive. That. The Grateful Dead and the Yes stuff too progressive, because I like some of it, but I couldn't listen to a whole record of either of those bands. You know, I fucking hated it from the moment uh-huh, the needle. Really? From the moment the needle hit, uh-huh. I was like, <laughs> fuck you. You know, what I mean? yeah, just not my thing. You know okay. what I mean? I get it. So, yeah, totally. But I kept, I kept Hendrix. I kept the Doors. Oh, yeah. I kept. Uh, I became a huge. Doors fan. I mean, I love to this day. I still listen. I listen to Doors pretty much all the time. Love the Doors, Hendrix, Zeppelin, um, and and then so and I was I was like so I'm like six or seven years old and you know like I said not very many friends, very introverted. Um, and then when I was like uh, I think I was about eight or nine years old and I mowed the I started mowing I started to mow lawns at that point because I was could use a lawn more. So I'd mow my lawn and this other guy's lawn up the street and they would give me money. And I remember my stepfather taking me to a record store, uh, Tapeville in uh, Rockin County. And I bought Queen News of the World, The Clash, White Riot, and London Calling. And I took those albums home and I, and I listened to them for the next, 
year just though and i i kept buying then i started buying i bought the police first albums and yana mandata i got into the who for a while um you know and then and then slowly like i started um just listening to my own music and but i i, I still liked my parents music like but van halen was mine they couldn't have van halen but then right like fair warning when that came out i was 12 man I was 12 years old, so that album hit me like a fucking ton it's of bricks. It's the heaviest Van Halen record. I mean, I love Fair Warning. Well, what was it's it? So... Fair Warning was 83, right? So I was like No, 15. 81. Was no, it 81? 81, yeah. So, okay, so 81. when the first one came out, 79. 78. 78. 78 okay, yeah. so, yeah, so I was- Because they did one every year up Right, right, then. so I had all of them, so I had Van Halen too, but when Fair Warning, when that when he when he did the opening chords Unchained, yeah. what the fuck, man? I'd never heard anything like that in my life. The tone. That, that, and that intro to Mean Streets, yeah. like- and I didn't even play guitar yet. I didn't even. I I was just listening. I had a tennis racket because I used to fucking. Did you do that? Of course. Fuck yeah. So how I, did, that's how you became good yeah. on stage. You played with the tennis racket. <laughs> so my I, bed was so, the crowd. It was in dude, the corner, and I <laughs> didn't. Priest records were on, and that was the crowd. And I was on the bed was dude. elevated, and I pointed out, and I knew. Dude, I to get that practice. That yeah. practice. Get yeah. Me. Man, so that's so that's what I was doing. I, I was you know I would some. I would fall asleep with headphones on because they were, you know, and I'd fall asleep and somebody wanted, whoever, if I was at my grandparents or my parents, they'd come in and they'd take them off because I had that record player that would re immediately put it back to the oh, beginning. Oh, really? It would reverse it to the beginning so it would continuously play, but they would seek and I'd be choked by the fucking by the headphones. Cord. So they'd come in and they'd take them off. Yeah, man. And then, so <clears throat> I was listening to like, Mike Bloomfield, which is a blues player, white guy, white Jewish guy from New York. I was listening to Queen, Police, and then I found you know Van Halen, Black Sabbath, and then and then uh, was that later, Rob? Were you finding no, the this, heavier stuff later? You yeah. Think? So this, I mean, I was listening to the to you know um, one of the records my I own mean, gave me was Sabbath. He gave me Paranoid. So I had I had that in my repertoire, but it wasn't until I heard. I think either because I, I I was loving punk rock, but then I think I heard like like early like Sad Wings of Destiny. I think that was what changed it. Well, that came out in seventy four, right? Yeah, it's seventy six with Sad oh, Wings. Rock okay. and Roller was seventy four. So Rock and Roller, then Sad Wings, right? So Sad yes. Wings is one is my, one of my top five. I listened of all to time. that this morning. It's, it's one of my top five said of all that. time. All the way through, I listened to yeah. it this morning. Yeah, it's one of my top five of all time. Um, Dreamer Deceiver brings me to fucking oh, tears sure. when I was a kid. It used to it was so emotional yeah, and powerful. It's a great song. But I also loved Rush, right? Early was, stuff he, is so heavy. Loved Rush, man, right? I loved Rush all the way up till Power Windows and then I kinda gave up, you know what I mean? But um and then you know, but and, you know, and I, I I was thinking about I was thinking recently, I'm like, is this just the albums I'm gonna listen to for the rest of my life, man? Am I just this is it? And that's all right, but you know, but I have, dude, I have. So I have like an '80s fix. You know what I mean? I have like, I, like I, I pulled up today. I was listening to the fix. And like, I love I'm, that. <laughs> that's what we were commenting on. And I started singing. And I looked at him, and I look at Wayne, and I go, "I love the fix." And he goes, "Did you get into that '80s thing?" I go, "Oh yeah, Tears for Fears." I, I, I was, I was one of those closet guys that did a Pet Shop Boys. You know what I mean? I just love no. that era shit. Yeah. The Cure. I just there were certain songs that I was like. There were certain songs, and I, I didn't, I didn't indulge in any of it. But when I heard it, I was like, "Oh, that's good." But you know, I was, so the other day I found uh, that I really like uh, Radiohead. Like they got this one called song called uh, "I'm a Creep," right? That's the no, only no, song no, I know. No, no, this is a better song than that. It's really? a better song than that. It's and it's heavier, but it's also mellow. It starts out mellow. And it's got the heavy part. I forget, I forget the name of the song, but it was fucking great. I'm like, God damn. So as I got older, my my taste changed, but I always had the same. I didn't listen just to one thing. I had friends that, that did that, so I I, uh, I I wasn't like them. I already knew I wasn't like them. Like I didn't. All my influences didn't come from an Iron Maiden record. You know uh -huh. what I mean? Like I, I, you know, right. But but I remember. No, look, man. I, I mean, my childhood wasn't that great, and I was, you know, from you know, by the time I was fourteen, I was suicidal. Like I was already so sad. And I didn't know why, and I didn't. There was nobody to talk to, and I didn't trust anyone. Um, unfortunately, my parents both left me when I was real young, and it really scarred me for a long time. Um, you know, I will say, 
before going any further, I'm really, I talk to my parents every week and I'm that's really, great. I've repaired all that damage. With so them. you're so, they're, they're still yeah, with they're, us. Oh, then, man, yeah. They're still awesome. here. Yeah. Um, so, but at 14, like, and I, it was, it was a silent thing. I didn't tell anyone, no one knew. And, but music made me feel better. Music was the only real thing I had. It was the, uh, like, I felt like Morrison was talking to me, man. I felt like on the, some weird spiritual plane with that. And, you know, I mean, as goofy as that sounds, but that's that's what kept me alive, right? I mean, because I was, but I didn't know how to kill myself. I didn't have a plan. I'm like, I didn't have a gun. I didn't have access to. It just wasn't the. It just wasn't the way it was. So then, when I was 15, I drank for the first time. I drank uh, and got drunk, and then uh, all those feelings went away. And I drank for the next 10 years of my life until I mean, I've been sober 28 years, but uh-huh. but I drank for the next 10 years and that's i feel like alcohol actually saved me through those real weird years of uncomfortable on my own skin didn't know who i was fucking you know um <clears throat> you know you you want to be cool but you're not you know i got picked on a lot by all the fucking you know jocks Jock at school dicks, you yeah. know what i mean I, I remember jamie conception man just what a fuck i i hope i that fuck that guy. He's probably you know? dead somewhere. Either that or he married a real fucking fat ugly girl. Uh, I hope so. He, that's what he fucking fuck deserves, him. man. He was such a bully, such a cunt, you know. And I just fucking. But school was a fucking nightmare. So my friend, uh, my friend Jim Demer, he used to. He was a drummer on the on the uh, We're All Gonna Die, uh, Generation Kill record. But when I first got sober, um, he was one of my biggest. Uh, fans because he he couldn't stand me when i was a drunk and uh i used to like uh i hung around bands and stuff they had like they had this band called rip house and i'd go and i'd help them load their gear in and shit and and then uh, i'd get drunk and then i would would never load out but (laughs) but uh i went to try out for this band one time and and i was so drunk and i i just that's a guitar player though right no oh okay I'd never done it before though. That was like, but I, you know, I was, I was, but you were, awful. you played guitar. I though, played right? guitar. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, but you know, when you're, when you're a raging alcoholic, guitars come second and third. You know what I mean? Doesn't so everything come second pretty and much. third? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Wow. So, you know, um, but that was the night that I quit drinking. And, and Jim used to, he came to my, uh, so I, I, I would, do like a celebration every year that I got so stayed sober, he would show up and it was a very cool thing. And, uh, you know, um, we didn't talk for a while, but we're, we're starting to talk again. And, uh, you know, um, yeah. Yeah. Dude, gotta relight that, huh? Just the edge. Cause I just lit it. So, so when, Exodus wasn't the first band that you played in, right? Actual band. You had you. Did you play in any any <coughs> other things? Even you know, like that you played a gig at. Did you? Was the so I had a band. I had a band with my friend Craig Safola, who I did the Exodus DVD with. He's uh-huh. a, he's an editor and he uh-huh. plays drums. And me and him uh, had a band, um, and we we went into a studio. We wrote like a bunch of songs, and you know, I played guitar, I played the bass, and I sang. And I, but it was. You know, it was very, um, it was very simple. Um, it wasn't, um, it was just, you know, it was just, we were just rock songs, man. You know what I mean? We were just, we were having fun. Um, you know, me and him were both kind of like nerdy kind of dudes. So we, he didn't really drink. So that's why we, I think we, we became friends because he didn't want to go to a bar and hang out. He'd rather just, hey, let's make music and do stuff. So we just did. We just, and we, you know, had a really good time doing it. We played a couple of shows. We did, I think, two shows, maybe three. Um, and um, so that was the extent of my playing. I never really did much more than that. Um, Exodus was like really one of the first uh-huh. things I did. So it was one of the one of the first things you did. I mean, I mean, I had done stuff, but not not a, not on any kind of consistent level. Uh-huh. You know, you're talking about. So me and Craig hung out for maybe two years and 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 did and, and, when, and, we did and how old two, were you three gigs? This time? I was 26, 27. Okay, I had just gotten sober. Now, when I got sober, so early 90s basically is when you go. Yeah, out. right. Early 90s, 93, 94, 95. You know. Um, 
I was listening to a lot of punk rock. I was listening. Were to you a lot attending of, shows in New York? Because I mean, it was a good hub for it. Maybe that was yeah. a little bit later, but even so, there was still sick of it all and 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 no, leeway you know, and bands. There was there was some good bands. No, Good hardcore in New York bands. I wasn't really doing that, Chromags man. Mags and you know. I would go see the Chromags. I've seen them a bunch of times. I'd see the Sick of All. I mean, I did go to shows, but I was going to more like metal shows. I went and saw Slayer with, with on Machine Head's first tour. That was like ninety four, right? Yes, ninety five. Yeah. So I saw that show with Biohazard, and I'd go see Biohazard in New York. And and uh, but um, the the truth was is when I was drinking. <laughs> Uh, if I didn't somehow force my way into the show, which I did see, I saw Exodus, I saw Megadeth, I saw Metallica. I went to all the, you know, the bigger bands when they were coming through, even though they weren't that big yet. Right. Um, but I was going to all that shit. I was going to more. Where was the venue that you would go to? Rob? I was going to the Scrap Bar. I was going to the Continental. I was going to CBGBs. I uh -huh. was going. Where'd you see us at when you when you saw? Us? I saw you guys. Remember that show? You'll remember it. It's it was in Lakeland, Florida, when the stage collapsed, when the barrier yeah, totally. collapsed, and yeah, the guy I broke his that. leg. Yeah, his leg went the other way. Yeah. I told that story a hundred times. Dude, I was wasn't that like a, an ice rink in like Tampa or something like that? That they me and my like, friends fucking created that mayhem. We were in the pit. You guys came out, boom, and we just fucking went crazy, and we pushed all these people, and that fucking thing collapsed. Well, they didn't build it correctly. It wasn't. It wasn't our fault, but it was. Yeah, right, yeah they but, didn't build but, it we, correctly. but we wanted. I would, dude. I was gonna go, but I was diving off that fucking stage. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, my friend was the one that pulled the cop into the crowd. Do you remember when that happened? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. That was me and my friends because they man. were the cops. That was the show I <laughs> they saw. They were across the stage. They had, and but they had no control of what was going on None. there. None. They Dude, thought they were trying to tell fire. us what to do. And we were like, hey, you know, like, and the guy was yelling at me, and I, I kind of looked at him, and I said... I was there, dude. I go, these fans will fuck your world if you we even did. touch me. And we they're like, yeah, Centro, yeah. And I was like, there was like five or 6,000 people in that place, and they had, it was plywood with... Uh, two by fours that were nailed to the thing. <laughs> yeah. So as soon as it, as soon as you started, it went, so no, that when when Celtic like Frost was it. when Celtic Frost was playing, <clears throat> no one gave a fuck. No one no, was right, moshing. Right, no one's right, right. the fucking house lights were still on while they were playing. It was right. like this crazy. And then as soon as fucking, I think four, you guys, four it was four four a fifth song. It was done by yeah. dad. It was done. You guys opened with fabulous. Yes, right. So when you opened with fabulous, dude, I came from the back. I was dude. I was so drunk. I mean that I was, I was so drunk. I drank like a bottle of vodka on the way there, like just, and I was most like, Texas fan, most yeah. metal fans did back then. Dude, That's fuck. what you guys did. That's Dude. what we did. Fuck, we were. And I was gonna. We've been going. Hey, you got any drugs too, yeah, Rob? Come was, on, let's go. I was fuck. diving off that fucking stage. I was stage diving that show. I was gonna fucking yeah. And then all that craziness happened. They lit cars on fire. Man. Oh yeah. They were throwing bottles at cops. They, they were, were throwing fucking, bottles at the buses. Yeah, and we were like, we wanted to play. So I, so look, so we walked away from that after all the mayhem and the fucking insanity. Um, I no longer liked Anthrax because when remember when the cops were trying to tell everybody to sit down and the wave of bottles and shit that came and Scott Ian was standing there. Like from then on, I was like, I'm no longer an Anthrax fan because fuck them guys, man. They were fucking hanging with the cops trying to tell everyone to calm down. Yeah. We're like, fuck you, man. We're at a fucking metal show. Yeah, How about right. you get the fucking cops out of here and let's fucking get this on? Yeah, yeah we were, we were, we were grilling. The cops made us go on our bus. They're like, get out of here. Get on our bus. And I'm standing there and I'm like, you know, hey, man. It's like, I'm, I'm, I go, I'm just trying to talk to the guys. The fans want to be cool. And they're like, get on your bus now. Yeah. You're going to get arrested. I go, you go to touch me. I had about 300 people standing right here just swallowing you, and they're all, yeah, yeah. 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 You guys, I just got on my bus, and but, yeah. I, but I still talk about those. Those are the times. Right? So when I got sober, I didn't go to, I didn't go anywhere for like a year. I didn't, I didn't go anywhere, bars, clubs. Matter of fact, it was like maybe, a, maybe like a year, and then I went out to California and started hanging out with TSOL and and um, all those guys. Um, Jack Grisham was one of the guys that helped me stay sober in the, first, in the very beginning. Still friends to this day. Uh -huh. See him all the time. Uh, love Jack to death. And he, you know, one of my, you know, one of my, you know, I just love the guy, man. He was, you know, one of those people that he yeah, saved my life. I remember seeing them in the punk days back here. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, they played many he times just, in the Bay Area. Yeah, man. So, you know, him and, and uh, you know, just a handful of people that, really helped me because you know when i first got sober man I, I so i had hair down on my ass and i was just a mess and i just i shaved my head i didn't shave my head i cut my hair short and i 
I stopped wearing black t-shirts and I kind of like just kind of had to figure out who I was. And so, um, by hang going to Southern California, I kind of like adopted that part of my life that I started wearing like, you know, um, you know, vans and, and, you know, surf kind of shit, you know, Shorts. What I mean? and, right. And I, you know, but I still, you know, like in most of those guys, they loved metal. I mean, ACDC was like a, you know, like a factor, you know, and always had been like, you know, uh, so that's the genesis of it all for everyone. I yeah. think is ACDC because it's, <laughs> it rocks, but it's hard. It's, it's, it's got edge. Rock and roll, man. It's rock and roll. It's but, great yeah. rock and roll. So, you know, so, you know, that, you know, all those influences I, that I had, but I never, you know, what's funny is I never, so, so about 10 years go by uh, in sobriety and I, I go through a lot of changes. I, I got to figure out who I was because you got to remember when I started drinking, I was 15. So I completely stunted my, my, my life as, as becoming a grown up, becoming, uh, learning how to, to live life, you know, as a, a functioning adult. And I did it by drinking through all that so now here i am 25 years old but i think like a 15 year old emotionally i was a fucking mess so i was going to fucking therapy and i was trying to just not be i was i was terrified of being drunk that was my because i'm not a good guy i'm not a nice guy i'm not fun to be around i'm not uh i don't like myself i fucking hated looking in the mirror when did it when did how long did it take you for you to realize that to go you know did that full time 10 years 10 years and then when you finally realized i it, was 10 you, years sober really to me 10 years 10 years to be comfortable in my own skin uh -huh. and know who i was when when that when those when that happened i ended up calling like a couple ex-girlfriends and doing the same thing hey man remember when i was drinking and we were you know, and kind I kind of like a twelve step, kind of like, <laughs> kind of like, a little bit of it. It's called the ninth, but yeah, the ninth, the ninth the, step. you just pulled the step out. I did, I did. You didn't I did go did through any of the other ones. Is that one? I made amends to all the people that I harmed, man. I fucking, I, I felt better. So then I get this, and then you know, I'm living in L.A. I'm happy, man. I'm, I'm like, you know, and we're in the '90s in L.A. right now. No, right? this is early. This is 2002. Oh, 2002. Okay, so early. Right? So. I was, yeah, I was Already? 35, 36 years old, right? Wow. So my buddy Jason, who plays in Prong, and he plays in Corey Taylor's new band, Jason uh, Christopher, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Jason is one of my closest friends in the world. And he was in this band called New Dead Radio, and they were on tour. So I arrived in L.A., and they were gone on tour. So he says, hey, man, I'm leaving my key with Johnny Chow, who's working, who's... Johnny Chow, fucking Soulfly, Johnny Chow. Oh yeah, oh Johnny. Yeah. He was working the door at the Viper Room, and, and he had the key for Jason's apartment. So I pull up on my motorcycle, and hey Johnny, I'm Rob. He goes, oh here's the key, man. He goes, dude, I said I'm gonna go take a shower. He said, yeah, come back, man, fucking come hang out. So I, the first night in L.A., right? Go to Jason's, he lives right next door to the Viper Room. Fucking <clears throat> go take a shower. I've been on the road for like you know 12, 13 days. I'm fucking gross. Uh, you know I put on my fucking pants and decent clean shirt and I go to the Viper room hanging out with Johnny outside and this fucking chick walks up and she's blah 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 and I'm fucking 20 minutes later dude she's like let's get out of here <clears throat> and, and Johnny and behind her Johnny's like what the fuck I'm like I don't know man so I went and I fucking bang this chick the first God, night welcome in LA. To, welcome, welcome to, to LA. LA. Talking about, <laughs> Ooh, we're going to reel this guy in. Yeah, huh? what, Johnny, when I talk to Johnny now, he still tells me that story. He goes, dude, I couldn't believe that happened. I'm like, me neither, man. She was a fucking, she was a 10. It wasn't like there was some drunken skank. No, this was a fucking... Like hot. hot LA chick, yeah, man. So and th that sold it right there, huh? Yeah, yeah man. The so, free place, <laughs> right next to the Viper Room, and the chick wants to bang you after fucking two hours. Not even, do dude. It was twenty really? minutes. Amazing. Twenty minutes. Yeah. So I started working at the Dragonfly as a bartender, and I ended up. Um, I had a little bit of carpentry skills, so they needed a new stage at the Dragonfly. So I built the stage. I built the bar that was out in the back of the Dragonfly. There's like an outdoor wooden bar i built that i built the, the closet for all the alcohol that goes on the top above the uh above the stage i did a bunch of work in there and i was working there at night i was bartending i was uh, on some nights i was bar backing on the busy busy nights and i was making good money i was working for uh live um for uh what's that company what's that big company that does all the shows now live nation live nation i was working for live nation so i was doing 
Coachella. Oh yeah. For two weeks every year, I was doing stagecoach for two weeks. So that was like three grand for two weeks of work. Really? Maybe like six grand for two for a month. Then I was working uh, at the El Rey, loading in bands like Queens of the Stone Age, and getting out and fucking watching band after band after band. And then Scott Koenig calls me, and he says, "Hey man," well. he says, "Hey man," some dude uh, just uh, fucked up the floor at the Palladium, dragging an amp across the floor, and they fired him. Do you want to go work a, a fucking six week tour? And I was with, I was working for Navarro at the time. I said, "Yeah, man, I'm done." working i'm done this is my last night yeah i can be there what time they want it two in the morning i go i'll be there so i fucking packed up navarro's shit and went to uh put it at the studio and packed it away and i fucking went home took a shower grabbed some clothes and jumped on the exodus bus and uh steve escaval was singing right and uh walked on the bus and it, now how got no, you no. got into you got into I was teching, right? You through were Live Nation, man. Yeah, it was you were really teching through Live Nation. Jeff Hickey. Jeff Jeff got you. Jeff got me into it. He's not doing well right now. That's what I heard. I don't know. I, I haven't talked to him in a long time. Uh-huh. Well, if you're out there, I haven't talked to him. Yeah. Doing well. yeah. But that's what he I uh, love Jeff, man. He was a yeah. good dude. He was fucking crazier than fuck. He's the second <laughs> craziest person I've ever known yeah, in my life. Yeah, he's pretty fucking crazy. Yeah. I can't. Uh, yeah, he was a hard guy to be around because he was just so fucking crazy. I loved him to death, man, but he was he was hardcore as fuck. And fucking sober when I hung out with him. Because when he got high, I couldn't hang out with him anymore. I was like, yeah, I can't do it. But he was when a he, nut job. Well, when I he knew was him sober. in the 80s when we were just like, oh, dude. when it was on, when it was on, because it was on for all of us in the 80s. But mm-hmm. I mean, you kind of, you actually kind of caught it as it, they weren't as wild anymore. You know what I mean? Like, Gary, no, Gary, man. They, there's no drugs anymore. No, anymore. I was the most so, dangerous fucker in, in yeah, Exodus, and yeah, I didn't I, even drink. Yeah, so you know I, what I mean? You caught them at, at a point where they didn't do anything. I mean, we we ended, we ended that. We ended yeah. that, you know. No, they were so. all. So when I met Gary, Gary, Gary no, was no clean. Drink, booze, but no, no Gary drugs. was clean. Rick wasn't. And, yeah. and, um, and Tom had just gotten clean right recent right right yeah it was a mess too. and uh you know so uh i go on the exodus tour with megadeth and uh and then at the last show i sang what the fuck is that song the salad song like a salad to oh you. uh deranged deranged so i got up and i sang deranged God, i had to think yeah i know um did deranged did you know at that point you were going to no. try out or no. they just... No, I, dude, I, here's the thing that's fucking awesome, right? I had no aspirations. I was happy living in L.A., doing what I was doing. Why did I you torture just, yourself like that, Rob? I was just that, banging Rob? chicks, <laughs> fucking <laughs> having fun, making money. Dude, I was making fucking money and fucking living. Yeah, you it went to making no money. I know no. what you did. I know what you did. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, I know. I had to. I had to get. Done. I had to get out because yeah. I mean, to, it was, and, a, and to it was honest, the dumbest, I mean, smartest thing to, like, I've ever to, done. To, to, dumbest, smart, exactly. And it's like it was something that. I really didn't want to relinquish, but I had a wife and three kids, and I couldn't cut it on what they were trying to, what we were trying to do at that time. And yeah. I, I had a good job. I had, I was a union carpenter, bringing home eleven hundred bucks a week, and all my family had benefits and stuff. And I had come home right before the Megadeth thing. It was like maybe a month before there was some South American stuff in there, and I came home, and um, I was only supposed to be home for a week, and. Um, I was then we were going to go back out again, so I went to go to my job, and you know my nickname was Rockstar. Obviously, at the, everybody at the job. It's my fucking it's small, my nickname now. Of my course job. it is. Yeah. And so I fucking I, I, and I and I was at a small door company. I did commercial doors. You know, I put in commercial doors for the union union carpenter, and I worked at a small company. And um, I go there, and I go on the board, and I don't see my name on there, but two days, and I says, hey, the owner. I says to the owner, I says, hey, um. Why? And he goes, hey, I'm rock star. We need to have a talk. So I come in there and he goes, hey, check it out. It's not right for you to go on vacation every other month and a half. I go, dude, you have no clue. It's not vacation. He goes, I know, but I have a business to run here and I know other guys. So 
I can't give you more hours than so that. So the other guys were, were complaining? Yeah, other guys were like, you what know. What a bunch like, of cunts. That's what I said. But I said, what a who cares? a bunch of fucking but he, but, cunts, but man. But I did understand the fact no, that. No, fuck them. That, 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 that the dude was at a small company, and we Whatever. only had like seven guys. And and because, I mean, with exes, we're com- coming. I'm gone for six weeks. I'm coming for a month. Then I'm gone for another six weeks, and he's all, I need somebody who's going to be here consistently. Mm. And then I was like, well, I make this here, but I make this here. So I, it was something that I didn't want to do. And yeah. I'm not happy about how I did it. And I can't take that back. Yeah. And, but, and, and believe me, I wasn't the nicest way to do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's just like, check it out. I'm uh, not coming back like mm. ever. So, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, just get somebody else to do the show you have to play tomorrow in Mexico. And then right. I fucked them. And I know that. And I said it to this day. I will own up to that, that I can't take that back. I try to make it back now by performance or whatever. Yeah. But I, I fucking, I, if I could have it back another way, I would have never done it like that. Cause that's not the character that I carry myself in. Yeah. And that's not how I built it. So that's how my part of that went to it. You know what I mean? And it was something that I was really reluctant because you know, Rob, I'd worked my whole life with this band and legacy and all that to become this and do this and just to go, well, fuck, <coughs> I just can't do this anymore. See you guys. You know what I mean? It was hard to relinquish it, but I knew being a father, you know, I had three children and a wife and I had to do, I had needed a steady paycheck and I needed my benefits paid for the kids and stuff, you know, and you know, you know, I don't know if you know the union. If you don't work so many hours, they won't cover they you won't medically, cover you. and so yeah. I, I couldn't do it anymore. And then I get to work, and yeah, I'm on the, I'm I got a fucking family of five and a mortgage and car payments, and I'm on the fucking clock this week for 16 hours. And it was like, what do I do? Go end up broke going on tour with Exodus, or stay broke as a carpenter? And I just. I had to pull the plug at that time, and that yeah. was kind of again. I didn't like that. Well, I did the luxury it. that I had that you didn't have was I didn't have a wife. Right. I didn't have a fucking girlfriend. Right. I did. I was living. Dude, I lived in a. I lived in a cool little apartment, man. I had a motorcycle. I had a nice. I had a '69 fucking Buick that I drove around. I fucking ALL lowered and fucking. I was just living, and and I was cool, and I was like, yeah, man. I'll f-. So. I did the tour with with uh, with Exodus, and then I jumped on a tour with Satyricon in the states. Satyricon was uh, um, uh, Joey Jordison from Slipknot was playing drums, and Satir, because the guy from Satyricon couldn't come to America because he killed somebody. So um, I'm the guitar tech on that tour, and um, and that's after the Megadeth. Uh, after Exodus. it was right out. Like I went from one tour. Like I actually flew from San Francisco uh-huh. to L.A. and jumped on a on a tour bus. Like I flew home and then jumped on a tour bus. Um, and went on that tour, and that was leading up from it was leading all the way up to the day before Christmas, and it ended in New York. And um, so <clears throat> uh, I was going to spend the, the Christmas in New York, <clears throat> and I'll never forget it. So. Tour ends, not in a good way. Um, one of the two of the guys got accused of rape. I was there. They didn't rape her. She she was a willing participant and then had buyer's remorse after, a little bit of fucking, oh, no. And so, and then and I, I'll tell you a story about the, a, a good ending to it. So two of the guys, cops come on the bus. They arrest two of the guys. They drag them off. Tour's over. And I, Joey, I send Joey home on a plane. I go to New York and... Uh, Satir goes back to Norway, and uh, the two guitar player who I liked a lot. So, so check this out. So I'm on tour with Satiricon, right? They they speak Norwegian the whole fucking time. They don't talk to me in English ever. They have, they never smile. They don't laugh. They don't fucking. They're just. They're fucking <laughs> they're Norwegian. They look they're, like fucking yeah. robots, right? So, so I'm. I'm goofy and funny and try to fuck with them all the time and they just weren't buying it, right? So we're in, what's the name of that fucking place in in Ohio with the huge parking lot with the barbecue outside and it's got the big stage and it, it's a huge parking lot. We were playing Newport football. Newport Music Hall, Columbus, right? Right, I mean, Columbus, New, Ohio, right, 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 Newport right. Music Hall. So yes. we're, we're there, right? And and one of the guitar players goes, hey, uh, if I give you some money, you think you can get me some Coke? And I'm like, I don't know. I'll, fucking try I'm, yeah so i talked to one of the local crew guys it's i'm like hey man town, of course I was like can i get some coke and they're like yeah how much you want I go, eight ball i'm like okay so i get the fucking norwegian some fucking coke 
And now I'm their fucking best friend. I'm their fucking, they're talking to me in English. So, and they wear that corpse paint, right? So they, all look, seven. so they all look fucking mean when they're playing. So they would be playing and then they would turn around, they'd come to the amp and they would smile with this corpse paint on, dude. It was fucking, because they, they, no one could see them right, but me because right. I'm standing behind the amp. And it just, it changed the whole rest of the tour. It was great until that night and I'm fucking in Montreal, man, or, or Ontario or Toronto or wherever it was. But so the tour ends. I'm I go to my buddy uh, Lenny in New York. I was living in L.A. Matter of fact, my, I was living with my roommate was Jen from L7, Precious. Uh, really? She I was me and uh, she had a house. I, I rented a room in her house and I was living with her. And uh, you were actually rubbing out before you even got in the band. You were rubbing elbows with with you know some you know heavy hitters that could you know quite potentially you know put you even to not in it. If you never even pursued it as a singer, maybe even a good place as a tech or you know a road manager or that kind of thing, you know, because it always. But I, I was I was free though. I had I had I had I knew who I was at this point, and I walked around. Nobody when I walked in a room, people weren't better than me. I was equal to everybody. Like I, I had this. The, the, but fixing. they never were better than you, Rob. Know, you understand? But, know, they but, never but, but, were. I know, but fixing that, fixing that part of my psycho, the, the, the uh -huh. my brain, fixing that part made me like a, a, maybe a nicer human being. It made me more um, empathetic and sympathetic with people. It made me just made me a nicer fucking guy to be around. And and I was started to be. I was hanging around with stand-up comedians, and I was hanging around with musicians, and I was, you know, hanging out at the, at the Rainbow. I was getting tattooed all over, man. I was like, you know, um, so, you know, <clears throat> everything just, it just, life was just, life was just awesome, man. And I was just, you know, and I was, I, I wasn't missing for anything, you know what I mean? And and one of those things too was I didn't have anybody at home to to i didn't have a wife i didn't have a girlfriend no so, children right no children so it's kind of like you know um you know it, it was it was i was just i was just styling dude i was just grooving along you know um never even went fucking scuba diving in california it was my whole plan never even went not once yeah fucking whatever so <laughs> i'm in new york i'm getting tattooed right it's like 11 o'clock at night and fucking Gary calls me and I hadn't talked to Gary in a couple months because the tour was over and I had already, you know, he's like, Hey man, I just wanted to wish you a Merry Christmas. And I'm like, you fucking Satan motherfucker. You don't fucking celebrate Christmas. We go, ah, you know, the fucking deal with kids and all that. I'm like, yeah. He goes, Hey man, um, we kind of liked what we heard when you did that, when you did deranged, which I fucking ruined it. Cause I had, you, you know, a lot of people they sing along with a CD. They think it's real fucking easy. You throw a mic in her hand with a live band. I'm, I, I guarantee you're gonna be like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Like the people. That people, song spits the fire. That, that fuck was fast, it, right? Dun, dun, fast, dun, 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 a lot of words. Dun, dun, dun. A lot of words. Yeah. So you know, I fucking ruined it. But um, anyway, they call me and they're like, "We want you to come audition." I'm like, "Well, I'm I'm not gonna be home for like two weeks, man." I'm because I was going scuba diving right after that. Uh, uh, oh no, I wasn't. I was actually work. I had to go back to LA to work for like a week after New Year's from New Year's after. So I was in New, in New York till New Year's and then working for like that week after. So I said, I'll come up like January 10th. So around there. So I, I, uh, I get to, uh, I, I rode my motorcycle up and I auditioned at the old studio Dan's. that burned down the crackhead that goes the meth Dan's, spot. Yes. So I, I auditioned there terrible the first night I had, Fucking Kill Bill staring at me, in front of me, with his fucking arms crossed, st sitting on a. I'm standing there, Zed. He's sitting on a fucking folding chair in front of me. You know. Really. <laughs> I forget all the words. I didn't want to bring a cheat sheet, but I'm like, fuck, man. You know. So I never really sang these songs. I sang with the CD. I, sure. I only knew Bonded by Blood, but I did like Tempo, and uh -huh. I thought it was some of your finest work. Uh -huh. And I did say that at the time. So I said, you know what? Let me. They're like, well, come back tomorrow. We'll try it again. And I came back the next day, and I met Lee for the first time because he was rehearsing downstairs with Heathen. And uh, I went up, and I But sang. Rick was still in at that time. Rick was still in the band. Room. Rick was still in the band. So it was me, Rick, Tom, and Gary, uh -huh. and Jack. And Jack. And um, so I, we rehearsed, and then uh, they were like, all right, cool. So second day was way better. I sang Bonded. I sang uh, stuff that was a little easier with timing. Uh -huh. Actually, Bonded was, a, for me, I could always, that, that beginning always got me. I don't know why. Um, 
My timing is terrible. So uh, Lesson of Violence, War is My Shepherd. And I think War is My Shepherd is the one that really got them, you know. Uh -huh. So I um, I said, okay, cool. Well, I'm leaving. And I left the next morning. I had a hotel done over in Oakland. And I got on my motorcycle the next morning. I went back home. I went and worked for like a couple days at a couple shows. And then Gary called me and says, hey, man, we're all going to be in Anaheim at NAMM. Why don't you come by? I'm like, oh, I'm already going to be there. I have a room and everything. Like, oh, cool. Well, fuck. We'll see you there. This is like January 2005, right? Yeah, January 2005. It's uh, like January like 25th or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Late January, the second, last, third week. Third, third week weekend, of January. Something like that, yeah. So I'm there. I, I go, me and uh, Jen from L7 go and my friend Jeff. And we're hanging out there. And uh, I fucking Al Jorgensen, was, I was hanging out with him. Um, I kind of knew him, but he was on acid, so you know, whatever. So no. I was babysitting Al. I was babysitting Al. We went and saw. And then Gary says, hey, man, meet us at the at the uh, Fender booth. And I, I was like, okay. So I was with Al, and we walked through, and Ronnie James Dio, Al lit a, we were in the middle of fucking NAMM, and Al lit a cigarette. And I was like, well, fuck, I'm going to light one too. So I lit one, and we're standing there, and Ronnie James walked up to us, and he goes, hey, man, let me get a drag of that. And handed my cigarette. He took a fucking puff. He goes, I can't believe you guys are smoking in the middle of NAM. And I was like, I don't give a fuck. He's got a big glass of wine in his oh, I bet he does. So anyway. He's a pisser. Yeah, he's funny <laughs> shit. So uh, we uh, we go over to Fender Booth. And then we're standing there. And uh, I was wearing, I was, with, I was with Rick. And I was wearing a FedEx in his shirt. Because it was one of my favorite shirts. I thought that was such a great story. That, the bullshit about it being fucking sued for something to yeah. fuck about. So... Um, standing there, and then Gary goes, "Hey man, everyone, meet the meet the new singer of Exodus." And I was like, I turned around, like, "What? Really? Huh. That's where they told me, right there." And I was like, "All right, cool." And then I was like, "All right, now I got excited do in it. the beginning for Rob. What do you? What was your emotions going through at that was, time? Or was it know, just kind? Ah, I guess this is cool. Or fuck, this has been the thing that I've been waiting to come my way, and mm. this could be the thing for me. Or what was your? What was your? What were you thinking at that time?" Seemed like fun. Right. Seemed like fun. Yeah, let's fucking do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let's, you know, like... And so the, on the bus, when I when, during the Megadeth tour, I mean, I walked on the bus, and it was like we were long lost brothers from the, from the moment I walked on the bus. Okay, so you had clicked Rick, with them. With them me, um, Rick, and Gary, and Tom, like that. Told the story about Lakeland or Tampa, Florida, yes. whatever that was. I said I was there. What? Fuck, oh, man, fuck. And, you know, and the, yeah, and then Tom's that, Tom's I think his brother was on tour with you Tim, guys at the time, Tim. right? And he almost got hurt, but yeah. he didn't. Oh, and, Tim made it out. Right. He was yeah. filming and right. he still has the filming where he puts it on the thing and climbs out and then he gets up and he somebody has it, him or Walter, and they look out and you see the guy trying to get out. And the thing just goes. Whoom, I bet you, buckles. if you look through that video, my fucking dumb face will be in that you crowd. You think? I fucking guarantee it. And fucking, I was there. I remember the guy. So right. Oh, yeah. So I'm on the bus. So now I'm fucking. I'm fucking like royalty at this point. And I was a really good tech. Like I really was a good tech. Like I loved guitars. Sexual guitar tech. You, I you? I knew guitars. I knew Floyd Roses. I knew their rigs. I I figured and. They actually, Gary said, he goes, you're one of the best techs I ever had because they g never broke a string, never out of tune, did you never anything handle gone Gary on. or did you do... I handled Rick, Gary, and Jack. Oh, so you did all three? All three. Oh, that, those were the lean years, I yeah. guess. <laughs> wow. It was me and Bill. Cool. Bill doing well, the yeah, drums. Yeah, Kill Bill, yeah. Mm -hmm. Kill Bill doing drums and me I doing guitars. Yeah. I love him. And um, yeah, so that's what that was. And you know, there was, it was fun. It, it was fun as shit, man. I was just having a good time, man. I was just, it that's was a good. cool job, you know what I mean? And get to drive or tour around and fucking sure. whatever. So, and then I go, okay, and join the fucking band. Well, yeah, I'll do it. And it wasn't like, holy fuck, I'm going to... I remember when I was on the phone, when I got the call, when I was getting... Ta I'm in the middle of a tattoo, and I take... I'm sorry, I got to take this call. Take the call. I come back, and I go, hey, man, I'm going to be the singer of Exodus, and I hadn't even auditioned yet. And he's like, really? I go, yeah, I mean, dude, how fucking hard can it be? Right, scream at the top of my lungs right. about Satan and fucking yeah, right, exactly. How up the churches, how yeah, hard can sure. it fucking be? You know, huh? I don't think everyone. I don't think everyone can do it though. I, think I it's believe me. I I I don't think so. There's, <laughs> or or you could probably do it. They could do it for one night, <clears throat> but like you said. 
Do it for 24, 17 in a row, 24 yeah. in a row. Do it for 42 out of 44, <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Or 45, mm -hmm. you know, because there was a couple of, oh, two years ago, we did those nine, one day off, 10, yeah. one day off, seven, so one dude, day off. So this? I join the fucking band. I come out, I do a demo. We do with Tilo. Tilo records three songs. Right? That shovel was, headed songs, right? Yeah, shovel headed. So we record I Am Abomination and a couple other ones. I don't remember. Gary says, Hey, man, I'm going to let you write the lyrics to this one. And he gives me the music on a CD. I go, oh, Cool. I happen to be reading this guy, Brian Lumley. It's all about vampires and fucking and God and fucking just, it was just, it's a great series. It's called the Necroscope series. It's like 13 uh -huh. books. And I read the whole thing multiple times. I read it like three times uh -huh. in my life. I'm reading this at the time. I'm reading it, and I'm like, so I write all the lyrics, man. I'm fucking just, just. I wrote the Karma's Messenger about vengeance, you know. Um, it's a big part of the story is in this in this book. So I said, okay, cool. And I, I was like so honored that he was this iconic band, and, and he goes, and he was just gonna let me write lyrics. I'm like, oh, all right. So I did. So I was like, fucking stoked. So we do the demo, and then Rick quits, and then Tom quits. Wow. Wow. Right. Bang, bang. So I fucking, I go back to L.A. And uh, I'm just waiting for whatever call. I just go back to my life, you know. Um, and then Gary calls one day and says, hey, man, we're going to we're gonna start recording the record. We got Paul Bostaff playing drums. And I got, you know, uh, Lee yeah. from Heathen, right? And uh, so I don't know either one of those guys. So I come back up and we start rehearsing and doing songs and stuff and and it was cool, man. You know, I mean, it was fun singing songs and fucking whatever. But now here I'm not working, not making any fucking money. So I got a subletted my apartment. Um, you know, See, put I my had shit to in work storage. I put in my the, shit in storage. After the tempo of the damned, when we reconvened for that, I was already working a job. So on top of going on, I had to, I, I had to balance both. Yeah. I could not. I had to you had kids and a wife. Yeah, I, had I didn't even have That's a fucking. I didn't even have a, a fucking cat. That's I had nothing. Awesome. I had yeah, a, yeah, it would have been easier then. I had it a motorcycle, and you know, so I, I, so Jack, so I was staying at. I'd come up here for a week, and I was staying at a, at a hotel down in Oakland. And Jack was like, "Why don't you just come stay on my couch, man?" I'm like, "Fuck yeah, they'll save me so much money," you know, because I was going back and forth. Right. So, and then, uh, and then. Uh, so then we start come up and we start recording the record and uh, you did with Juan right Shovelhead was yeah it was Juan yeah right so you know Gary does his scratch tracks and fucking I do I knew a couple of the songs already but most of them I hadn't even heard yet because we didn't really rehearse anything we just did those three songs which were kind of like pretty much you know they were the first three we did but um, so we re record everything and I get up there and I I sing Rays I realize my timing is really bad because I can't. Because I've never done this before. I never, never fucking did it on this on this scale. But I gave it my all, man. I fucking blew myself out the first day. Fucking, that's why my my voice is so scratchy on that record. Because I didn't know how to control myself. I just, I just went a hundred percent, full tilt, rah, as, as much as I could, and I got through that record. By the end of the record, I started feeling better, but I still smoked cigarettes. Uh huh. And I realized that I had to quit. So. I went to uh, uh, Nikki Black's house, right? Went over to Nikki's house. It was me, her, Kevin, Paul, Jack, and we were all hanging out. Everyone's drinking. And I, I bought that two for one camel pack. You buy one pack, get one pack free. And I bought that. I said, This is the last thing I'm buying. I'm right here. And I was going back to LA the next morning. So I sat there that night. We all hung out. I smoked a pack of cigarettes, and then I smoked a pack on the driving back to L.A. I get to L.A., I go to my house. It was a Sunday. I smoked my last cigarette at like 10 o'clock at night, and my buddy from San Diego was coming up Monday morning. And uh, I said, uh, I told him, I was like, dude, I gotta, I'm quitting smoking tomorrow. He's like, ah, oh, good, you should, you fucking, you smelling like an ashtray, motherfucker? Because I didn't know I smelled like an ashtray, but obviously I did. So uh, I quit smoking. And it took me uh, 10 days before I didn't want to kill anyone because I spent 10 days. The first two days I was with him, we were jump, running around L.A., going, doing, like, all sorts of fun shit, hanging out till 5 in the morning. And then he left on Wednesday. And then I, 
Uh, actually, no, I drove him back on Wednesday morning to San Diego, and then I drove home, and then I stayed in my apartment for 30 days, and I didn't go out anywhere. I didn't go. I got. I had backstage passes to Iron Maiden and uh, at uh, OzFest, and when Iron Maiden and Ozzy were uh-huh, there. Yeah. Remember the egg con thing? I heard about I was. That. I had VIP backstage that show, and I didn't go because I was really? like, I'm going to smoke cigarette if I go to that show. I'm not going to go. And I didn't go. I was like, I need to quit smoking. So I knew that I had to quit. So I uh, I did after like 30 days, man, I quit. And then it was time to go back up there um, and rehearse. And uh, so I started going up there rehearsing. We rehearsed Monday to Thursday. We went through, we'd come up with a set list. And it was mostly bonded and uh, fabulous stuff. And then... And then a couple off tempo, and then all like the entire new record, dude. We were playing an hour and forty five minutes the first, the first nine Brutal. months, the nine months of touring was an hour and forty five, because Gary was like, dude, there's so many fucking songs. How can we not play this? How can we not play that? And we weren't even playing Toxic, because Paul hated the song, so they didn't want to play Toxic. Oh my. Yeah. Wow. Anyway. Wow. So, join the band, finish the record, cool. I go work Coachella. I work stagecoach. All right, we're going to go do a tour. We're going to do States tour with Three Inches of Blood and and um, uh, a band from Every Time I Die. No, not Every Time I Die. Uh, they were from here. They were from Oakland. Great guys. Sonny was in the band. Oh, I can't remember the name of that band. From Oakland? Yeah, they were fucking good. Pat was a singer. He had his tattoo. His head. And, uh, anyway, so we go on this tour. Um and uh, the first show was a. Do you remember your first Exodus show? Uh-huh. Okay, my first Exodus show was. It couldn't have been that bad. There's no way. There's no way. <laughs> Mine's worse. I'm telling no you. No way. Jack. Mine's worse. You didn't catch a full beer in the head if, yeah. unless you caught a full no. beer can in the head. I would have. I would have liked a beer, you, full beer in the you head. You didn't. You didn't experience <laughs> my <laughs> first Exodus show. My first Exodus show. It's was... on video too. You see it coming out of nowhere, and it just goes, man, right in the fucking head. And it was not open. Nobody drank it and threw it. They bought this place okay. we played. The farm was sold bottles and cans, and that was a fucking mistake. Wasn't into a cup. Somebody bought that beer, did not pop it, because I'm going to fucking hit Zetro. Bail off! <laughs> Bam! Dude, we played a, a Mexican Mercado. So we walk into this room, right, with a full tour bus, with a tour bus and a trailer, with a crew. We walk in. Dude, it has, like, <coughs> one of those little, little like, cafeteria windows where the, Right? There's a band playing on the stage is like a is like six inches, dude. It's a little block of wood in the corner. Then there's a, a Mexican band playing full the full getup with families and kids running around. And this is our first show. So that was the opening act? No, that was just a band that was playing there during the day and we were gonna play there that night. Right? And Lee goes, <laughs> Lee goes Welcome to Exodus, dude. And it was both of our first gig. And we were like, fuck, man. So we're laughing about it and whatever. We watched the band. They were fucking great. And then and then, uh, and then, they shoved like 50 fucking dirty Modesto metalheads into this fucking shithole. They sure and, did, didn't and they? they? And uh, Jack's like, dude, he goes, I know what's going to happen. You're going to go up there. You're going to grab that mic and you're going to fucking. First thing you're going to do is you're just going to pass out fucking, fucking your first gig. But we did it. Got through it. I realized that I was a little bit, a little bit punk rock and a little bit metal at the same time, which, you know, and then, so then I remember Lee telling me, just, just be your, just find yourself. You'll, you'll be all right. You know, but then I had someone else, I won't name names in the band, but they played drums and they fucking told me like, no, you need to, you need to watch other singers and you need to, fucking. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. And I didn't. Me, no. And me, me and Paul didn't really get along because it was just it wasn't that we didn't get along. It was just he had his idea of things and I had mine. And but I mean, uh, as a singer opposed to a player, a drummer, or a guitar player, you really need to find your own, you know, because mm-hmm. there's no tone to rely back on or a drum that they can that's you. It's all about yeah. you. And it's and when the music stops, it's like your solo time. You know what right. I mean? And, and, and yeah. you have to, you know. You know, and, and it's whatever your trip is, you know, and, and, and you kind of got to, I mean, after the, 
legacy being in legacy and then joining exodus by the early times i had my trip down i knew right. what you i knew was who you were, i knew yeah. how i went at it <clears throat> i didn't and know any I of that and that would that's that would be difficult <clears throat> i could see that too right. you know because finding that and it's just very it'd be, 37 years old never you know, did this before in my life so we we go on this tour fucking i struggle the whole time um mentally <laughs> one of the things that was happening was was I would say things like, so we've been on tour with bands. You ever go on tour with a band? You know, they say the same thing every night between the same songs. They have the same spew. They do, they do the same. It's like an act. And they do, if you see it two nights in a row, like, oh, we said the same fucking thing last night. Well, I was more of a, like a stand-up comic where I didn't do that. I talked about what happened that day, and I would talk about things that were happening in the news, and I talked about like, and, you know, it's always just like this little banter, real quick, but I never... I never thought about it before I said it, and I threw a lot of like shit that I shouldn't have said. I uh -huh. said I made a lot of like I used to make Gary cringe, dude. Like I used to make him like, oh, I used to, but there was something about it that was like it was like fun to do that too to him, and to do it to the crowd because I found this thing. They're like hockey fans, right? I know you're a Calgary Flames fan. I yes. know that about you, right? Yes. Um, and I'm a New York Rangers fan. Yes, right? I know that. So. I can break your balls about how much Calgary is such a piece of shit team Ugh. and they're the fucking worst, right? And you can break my balls about how the Rangers suck, but we can still love hockey and we're still... That's how I was with the fans. I was... I was... Uh, I felt like I connected with them and I could make them fucking angry at me, but at the same time, they had like this little bit of respect. Oh, yeah, maybe, maybe we are a bunch of pussies. You know what I mean? Or, You know what I mean? It was like this... It was like this thing that I, I I had with them, rather than it was like a hockey thing more than a than a than a thing, and and I didn't want to say what what everyone wanted me to say, and I was defiant with them, and, and it caused a riff, and the and we would argue and 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 go through shit, me and Paul, and then, and me and uh, Gary from time to time, but Gary was actually really awesome, but you know, I mean, I, I did make him cringe a lot, dude. Oh man, I used to say such shit. I mean, I still say something every <laughs> once in a while. And then I'll look over and he'll go. Mm, he'll yeah, the dis I called it the disappointed stepfather he'll, look. He'll look. He'll do this, <laughs> and, and and I know. Oh shit! And then I'll get this like, <laughs> fucking. Oh fuck! I should have said that thing. Yeah. But I mean, I think that that's coming from um, not trying to be, um, um, you know, a cookie cutter, and also trying to be spontaneous. And like, because I like. I didn't like the bands that said the same thing every night. Like yourself, I mean, I, I'll keep a pattern with certain things, but I'll also I like to see what, and I'll put, hey, hey, you, check it out, you. No, 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 no. If you do that, every people, you know, like I'm picking one yeah. guy out. So I try to. Yeah. You never know what's going to be in between songs, and I think that that, I, I to me, that's Exodus. That's yeah. Bailoff was the same way. Yeah. Bailoff back in the day, bro. Bailoff would be like. You'd go to the shows not to hear him sing. You go to the shows to hear the fuck what he's gonna say in between the songs. Yeah. And I was again because, like yourself, I was an outsider coming in. I got to look at the band from a different view. I'm the Blaze you know, Bailey of fucking Exodus. Oh well, the, 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 <laughs> that, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. The Blaze, the Blaze. I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I, yeah man. Yeah, I guess I so. I know the fuck I am. I'm, yeah, I'm all right with it. Not Gary Sharon though, right? <laughs> not Gary. No, Chiron, that's right, no. Blaze. But, hey, I tell you what. Blaze's two records with Iron Maiden are fucking great. So, regarding it's like John you Bush, want, man, it's like John uh, Bush. He's, you, I'm, fuck, he's my favorite singer in metal. Sorry to say, yeah. I, and every time I see him, I tell him that I love him. Yeah, Armistead got a new record out. I, I, I like I like the guys in Anthrax, but I'll never forgive them for that that Florida show. They just no, really no. I was I on tour. I, I went on we tour. We were already shuffled out of there. I remember. Right. I didn't remember yeah. that. They just were. It was just. It was, you know, I guess they thought they were doing the right thing. I bet you if they saw it on video now, they'd be like, eh, we shouldn't have done that. Let's talk a little bit about Shovel-Headed Kill Machine because okay. I am, I don't sing much of that, right. but I do sing Death Amphetamine. Uh, uh, Hard song. Fuck. You want to know why? Because the, the, the cadence is different on every verse. Yeah, the sentences start. They don't all start in the same place. No, some they of them do start not. on the and. Some, some start on the one. one start on the, the two. That's right. Yeah, and if that's you get right. and if you get off, you get yes, dude. Get, I I fucked it up for a hundred shows every single fucking night. Could not. And with Paul, <clears throat> here's the thing, right? I do it better with Tom because Tom doesn't. Tom's meter is fucking perfect, yeah, right? Yeah. 
Paul would throw bricks He plays out it too. different, too. But Tom plays it yeah. a little different. Yes. Just a little different. But the thing was, is like, I couldn't... You know, it was, like, it was like trying to remember lyrics, right? And then you're also trying to remember, oh, this one starts on one, this one starts on the and, this one starts... And it was just for a hundred... Dude, at one point, they're like, dude, if you keep fucking this song up, we're not going to play it anymore. And I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Fuck it, let's not play. And I was like, I'll get it. Just fucking give me a fucking shot. You know what I mean? So that was the one song that was the hardest to sing, was that song. Well, that's... And I find that because I, I'm looking at it like when I, I had to dissected i had to break it down to learn it you know and it was one of the la the last ones i had done iconoclasm and 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 and, and uh, children of a worthless god those were like the first ones right. i did uh, uh, uh um I, I first ones i learned but it was this was one of the, the later ones i learned and i've done a lot i mean ballad of leonard charles is my favorite bro sorry love yeah, that man. fucking song yeah. and i just i'm the one going let's open with ballad of leonard and charles. what do you mean you go i'm like yeah let's open with that it's so heavy so then when i went to learn it i had to dissect i had to dissect death amphetamine to like you said yeah okay so first verse First one comes in right. Second line comes in quick. Third and fourth are on the uh, on the one. Whole second verse to me. This is how I see it, and I right. look at it that way. All the lines fall in on the one. Third verse. <sighs> first one comes in fast. Second one comes in real fast. Third, third one one's comes, late. Third one comes in late. Fourth one comes in where, where it's the supposed normal, to be. Normal timing, yeah. exactly. See, and I had to fucking like break that shows. down. You well, I didn't have a hundred shows to do that shows. in. I, 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 I had to <clears throat> nail it and I and I killed me and I mean Rob, I probably listened to that. I'm I'm gonna say no less than fifteen hundred times to get it right because I really like to be prepared vocally when I go out yeah. there and I just I had no problem with any of the others. They were great. I had so and I, to be honest, I love singing I could, I put more of your songs if I'm making this said, <laughs> Hey, can we put this one in? That's and good awesome. riddance. Let's put good yeah. riddance in there. You know what I mean? Let's yeah. do that one. You yeah. Know, the fucking so I I'm 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 I love that and and but that one was like out of all the ones that you've done on on you know through Exhibit A and Exhibit B and that that one was like the one that I I was like fuck how did he fucking do this? Because it's like and and I've got a on the third verse. I have to almost back myself up to Tom and listen to the drum. Yeah, listen to that. He goes, psh, psh, th th then I, you go. I, I thank you very. <laughs> I, it's exactly yeah, what I do. I know what about. And I back up uh, to him and said, and that's like, I want to hear that. They're gonna come over and but don't bang with me. I'm so, trying to listen right now. You know what? I, and so, I wait for that because I yeah. couldn't come in if he didn't well, I, do it. So I had to tell Tom, like Tom, that's you have to do that every time. Every time because I'll fuck it up. Yeah. Want. And what's fucked up is once you get off on the line. Good luck. You're fucked. You're done. You're fucked yeah, until the next out. sentence. So I used to just pretend my microphone was fucked up. Uh, and so I'd do like, and I have the crew come running. I go, I'm only faking. All right, and then I'd start again. That's how that was my trick really? was to pretend the microphone wasn't working, which which it was. I just forced myself to figure the cadence out and mm. learn where it went. So. I actually, I at really the chapel, I was terrified to do it because really? I knew because I hadn't done it in so long. Did you do it that night? Yeah, I, I did that night. You did yeah, I that did that night. night. Yeah. So, uh, I can I I have a hard time remembering lyrics. So even my own, like even in Generation Kill, uh -huh. I have a cheat sheet below me. I have. Do you? I have a cheat for some reason, and I don't even smoke fucking weed. You fucking weed head, and you fucking remember lyrics. I, I hear you remember everything. Yeah. Yeah, so at the chapel, it. dude, I didn't remember the word. I forgot the chorus at uh, on on children. Really? I was faking it. I was just going, I was just, I was mumbling the melody and I didn't remember the words. And I'm going, the fuck are the words? The fuck are the words? And I didn't remember them. And I mumble. If you listen to the tape, uh -huh. I mumble through yeah, that. Yeah, because he I don't recorded that actually. Wayne, Wayne did it. Wayne. You gotta listen to children. You got it's a fucking Wayne comical. Has it. I don't say a fucking I didn't say one word. The whole chorus. It happens three times and I never <laughs> remembered it. Really? Never. But I mumbled the fucking melody enough that people were like, you mean, didn't I you fear? No, no, no. No. The 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 sub chorus. Oh, oh, uh, uh Fight I'll be blindly the death like a dog, yeah, whatever. Fi that yeah, yeah. that whole section didn't remember not one fucking word. Mumbled really? the whole thing. 
three times. And nobody in the crowd gave two shits. I don't think I don't They think don't so. know. They don't give a shit. They know. Yeah. One guy did. Follow us blindly. One guy did. He probably blindly shit on me on fucking little. blabbermouth. Rugged fucking You saved us a killer. Yeah. Die for Allah. You were all children of war. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, I the, I remember the last line, of course. You, you, but, you were all yeah. You got that part. <laughs> yeah. Dude, so I used to. Dude, I forgot Blacklist one night. I fucking couldn't remember how it started. I couldn't remember the first. I'd be Gary, what's the first word? What's the first word? And he'd go, I don't know. And he'd run away from me. And Gary? Gary would run. Yeah. Like, I would run to, what's the first word? But see, that's that that can happen to anyone. It's just, I just need the first word. And then once the first word comes in, the whole thing falls right. in. So I, 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 one night I was uh, I was at Slayer a couple years ago, hanging out with Halford. Because Halford lives in Phoenix, right? Uh-huh. So it was way, this is like a couple hours before the show. And I get there to see Gary. But then I was hanging out and I ran into Rob in one of the hallways. <clears throat> so we're sitting there talking. And I said, uh, I said, uh, hey, man, do you forget the lyrics? He goes, dude, I have 23 fucking teleprompters on the stage. I have iPads everywhere with them with the floating lyrics because I don't. I go, dude, I have the worst time. He goes, yeah. And you don't smoke because we're both sober. And I go, and we don't smoke pot. He goes, yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it. I've sing this song for 30 fucking years and I just go blank. And if I don't have that first word, so my set list used to be the set list. And then I'd have a sheet next to it and have the first word, word of all the song. Really? But only, not, not every song, but a lot of them. And then by the fourth or fifth show, it got less and less. And then by the end of the tour, I didn't need anything. I was fine. It was only the repetition on a consistent basis. But if we did a tour for six weeks and then I had three weeks off, and then had another six weeks, that first show... I was a fucking mess, man. I was a fucking... I had a cheat sheet everywhere. And fucking people... The, Gary used to get so mad. But he got more mad at me wearing Vans checkered sneakers on stage. Oh, really? Oh, dude. You I let to, that go after a while because that was your look. You had that and the hockey thing going on for a while. No, he just used to drive him crazy, man. He used to drive him crazy. I did it because it drove him crazy. Yeah. Lee used to giggle, dude. Fucking Lee would be like, dude, you're just torturing him. I got no. Let's take a break, and then we're going to get back, and we're going to talk a little bit about <laughs> Gary Holt. <laughs> yeah. So what's up, everyone? And we are back with Rob Dukes, and we are going to be talking. We've been talking about Shovel-Headed Kill Machine. Yeah. and 44 um, Magnum Opus. You yeah. Ever, the, you ever done that one? No, we haven't done that one. You need to throw that in the fucking yeah. set, dude. You got to get Tom. Tom's got to play that. Dude, that song is But cool. I've heard that uh, many times. I mean, I love the song, but I, and I've heard them bring that up, but it's... it's, it's uh, the set lists are wars to get those. I, to, I know they are. I, so, you know, it starts yeah. at one. It's it's it. There's a draft, and then there's another draft, and then this person has to okay it. And it by the time yeah. it gets, we used to end with that going right into Shovelhead Kill Machine and end the show, dude. And it was just people were just it was it just pummeled them into. Submission. It pummels them. And now now your first tour singing that stuff live, how was that for was you to do? You you could you had no problems with it. No, I did. Like, I did. I so like I said, Death Amphetamine, a hundred shows. So we went on. So tour you America. played it every show. Regard that was because I mean to me that's the well, best song. It was one of the best songs, but it also ever. It was like I was ever. like I convinced him. I was like, dude, all right, I'm fucking it up. Nobody's even heard it before. Who gives a fuck? Like, just give me. Let me just. I'll figure it out. Just let me figure it out. Just leave me alone. I'll figure it leave out. Me alone, I'll figure, keep, leave, leave me alone. I'll figure it out. Leave me alone. Famous words. Fucking Mike, Pepsi. Mike Muir. Damn right. <laughs> leave me alone, I'll figure it out. So, even if I stop breaking my balls. but So, I remember we, we did the U.S. tour, and then we immediately went to, to Europe for three months. We are on tour with Hypocrisy. So, me and Peter, best friends, like, immediately, man. I mean, he's on my tour bus every night, or I'm on his. We're hanging out. And he said to me, he says, dude, just keep doing it. You'll get it. But... I wasn't smart enough at this point to figure out what the fucking problem was. I thought it was just me. And then I did the same thing you did. I broke it down with math and said, oh, this one's starting on the end. So I actually wrote it, wrote on, I wrote the lyrics out in full with a big Sharpie on a big piece of paper. And I would write and one, two, uh huh, one, 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 two. You know what I mean? And I wrote it, and that would be next to my set list because that was the just only for that song. It was the only song that gave me trouble. Everything else was actually that's not true. Fabulous gave me trouble because it was fast. Because I wasn't look, man. I'd never done this before. You know what I mean? So okay, now recording fabulous because if you notice, 
when the missiles are falling, that comes in on the yeah. seven, not the eight. Yeah, it comes in. And a when Gary before. was trying to tell me that. Right. I, it was like even, when, they were even uh, standing missiles. in the window, when, uh, and I'm missiles. missing missiles. when the <laughs> missiles. It's it, <laughs> it when the missile. And I swear to God, the, I had all of them like when we <laughs> recorded that, like a fucking like cheerleaders, <clears throat> cueing me in, and I'm like, uh, when the missiles, because right. that's a fucking trippy thing. So when it? we did death amphetamine, there was nothing of that. It was I was winging it by the seat of my pants. That's why it ended up that way. Because I was just trying to fit the syllables in the sentence, in, 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 the, in the line. So that's why there was never, it was never talked about, oh, this comes in on the end, or the, this is just fit that sentence into this space. So that's what I, all of it was seat of the pants. Sh- sh- uh, shovelhead Kill Machine, there's that, when you, have you ever done that song? No, we haven't okay, done so that, shovelhead, but I know it. So Shovelhead Kill Machine, there's a, the second verse, there's, a, there's, there's, a, there's like a snare thing. And it's it. You come in on three, not four. You come in on the beat before, and if you don't, you're then, you're, then the whole thing's because wrong. the whole thing is one fucking right. sentence. There's not even a breath in there. Yeah. It's you know what I mean. So there. So by the time, by the time the hypocrisy tour ended, I was styling. I, I got it. I figured it all out. So I'd done now a hundred shows. The problem was is that um, my nerves were fine once I got going, but I would throw my, I would throw, I couldn't eat during the day before the show. Cause I would throw up as the, you know what I started, I started dry heaving when I heard when the, when the, when the, when the, I could hear the crowd, the intro music or what? No, I hear them guys doing the, the drum sound takes really. I was, what? Well, what, what was it? Well, what do you think it nerves, was? Man, really? Fucking nerves. Nerves because of, did you have a fear of walking out or talking to the crowd or, cause I mean, you'll feed famous people to this day that like have to have a drink or they need that. <laughs> they can't walk out yeah, and face that. that. I don't have that you know, option. I never so, been tattooed high or nothing either. Yeah. So. so what it was, 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 it was just nerves. And then, um, I'm going to say for the first I know a couple years, man, and then the bigger shows would do it to me. Iron Maiden, we opened for Iron Maiden in Chile. That did it. Vakken, That's a great show. The, the Vakken one, bleh, really, dude. I walked up. I'll never forget. I walked up. We were walking up the steps, and as you walk up the steps of Vakken, you know, the, it's those grates, and you can see uh-huh. the crowd through the fucking steps. Yes. And I just went, bleh, and I threw up my coffee and all the water I'd had up to that moment because I, I, I hadn't eaten yet because I knew no, don't eat before a show because when I throw up, I don't want liquids okay, but I don't want food coming up. I'm the it same way. Tear, tear my throat I've up. always made that rule. So Never eat I, before. And I hate it because it would make your throat rock, you know. But, oh, totally. So I tried not to throw up, but I just couldn't do it. I just would just gag and fucking. And then, but um, so for like the first, year of touring that i threw it before every show and those guys would all giggle because once the sound once the fucking the 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 the, the intro music intro or... music started fucking uh, uh, the, the fucking kevin and all the tech guys would have a garbage can behind the amps and then hand me my really? microphone yep. so it was just it was just one of those things and eventually it kind of went away and it would come out at the bigger shows like you know, and you know the deal. When you're coming out to a bigger show, like I always stepped up. Like they, I would feel nervous, but as soon as I yelled that first, "What's up, motherfuckers!" Like all that went away. And you know, you know the weird thing about being a singer or being an entertainer or being a musician is is that the fans see you in a certain way, and they don't they don't because you are kind of like a character a little bit. Like you are a character. You know, that's not. I mean, just because I act that way on stage, you know, like I remember I used to read the comment when I first started doing this, I read all the comments and then at one point I just had to stop. Yeah. Cause that's the number one rule. Yeah. But I didn't follow that rule for <laughs> years for like, like a year or two, man. Right. I had to teach my children that rule. Like, believe stop me. fucking who cares? Who cares what they say? Don't that's give, right. Give a fuck. You know that's I mean? right. So I had to, but but it, for for a while, sure, I did. and I could see how it would because it's I've never did it before. Right, that's right. Fuck, and, and, man, I like the adulation, you know, but I didn't sure, like the, the shit. The, the, everybody, and knows everybody's the, got their own fucking that's opinion, right? right? Oh so, yeah. And they see you as so. I'm not a tough guy. I don't. I don't even claim to be a tough guy. I'm heavily tattooed. I got. I, I shaved my head. I shaved my head because I had a bald spot and I didn't want to have long hair and a bald spot. I think that's a dumb look. I didn't want to do that for myself, so I grew my hair long at one point, 
gave it to kids with cancer and then I fucking shaved it off. You know what I mean? So, and I didn't care. Like, just it just became this thing where people were very, very, uh, they didn't like me. And I just, at one point, I was like, I need to stop. This is, yeah, I already don't attention. like myself. I don't need you shit. Yeah, you can't, too, you can't you pay know? attention to that. So, you really can't. I had, uh, you know, a couple run-ins with fans and shit. Like, you know, but nobody's ever said anything to my face. It's always been online. Nobody's ever, nobody's ever come up to my face and said, dude, I hate your vocals, man. They're fucking terrible. Nobody's ever said that. Right. Not once. And they never will. And 99, 99.9% of the people that shit on us don't even fucking know us. Yeah, well, that's the yeah. thing. And it's like, and you know that coming into this part of life, and especially now that social media is what it is because yeah. it was never like this in the 80s. We had tape trading, and that was it. I didn't care what your fucking opinion was. Yeah. But now it's like everybody can chime in. You can go to any forum, even on this show, they'll, they can chime in and leave their comments on that. So, uh, uh, you know, it, it, you've, you've let them get more inside and closer. Oh, and, they, yeah. and they think as... You inch in, they're, they're going to test you on that. So I, I, I've learned a long time ago, when we first got Hatriot together, the kids were like yourself, man. They'd see something good, and then they'd read the one thing out of maybe 20 or 30 things that were bad and go, you know what, fuck this and fuck this. Like, just, 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 yeah. just, just, just. Number hey. one rule, you don't read the good if you're not going to like the bad. <laughs> and it's just <laughs> like that. I had to tell my mom, mom, please do not. Do not answer back on the comments yeah, on Blabbermouth. Yeah, please. right. Please well, please that's the worst. <laughs> They'll just leave you mom, out there. Please don't do Hang it. you out mom, to just, fucking dry. Just, just leave it alone, Mom. It's good. It's fine. It is what it is. Yeah, so. yeah. And that's yeah. the thing. And it's the people around you. Like, you know, my girlfriend will read shit and go, what the fuck is this person? Yeah. It's like, ta, 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 ta. Yeah. You, you, you know what? If you're not pissing anybody off, then you're not doing something fucking yeah, right. You right. know what I mean? So, yeah, man. oh, so, well, too bad for you know, them. And I, I loved hanging out with the fans because you got to remember that. I mean, I was a fucking fan that just got lucky. I was in the right place, right time with a, just enough talent to pull it off. Do you know what I mean? But I was a fan. So I identified with every single... Dude, I remember me and Paul getting in a fight one night. Like, not a fight, but an argument. And and uh, and right before he quit. And it was because we were we were on tour with Hatebreed. I fucking love Hatebreed. I love Hatebreed. I was stage diving during their set. During their set at one point, I'd come running across and I'd dive into the crowd. And then I knew I know all their songs. I was singing all I was in the front, in the pit. And they're like, you you can't be doing that. I'm like, why the fuck not? I don't see the other four saying, the other three saying that. They would, I would, I mean, Gary, I think that's cool that you jump out and hang out. Well, Gary never, knew. no, man. And Gary, Paul was the only one who yeah. thought that it was, we was like, well, you know, fucking Chris broke his rib once and the tour is, I'm like, well, if I break a rib, I'm not, not going to sing. Like, like that's, that's dumb. What am I not going to live my life? And I, dude, when we were on tour of hypocrisy, I was in that pit and in front of that crowd every night. And Peter would fucking see me all the time and he'd be like, Fucking, you know, and me, and that's why me and Peter were ended up being really close friends to this day. I mean, I talked to Peter last week. Oh, you did? How's um, he doing? He's awesome, man. Good. He's doing good. really good. Man. He was here for a little while. Yeah. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He, he had. He was the first singer in uh, Craig LaCicero's band, uh, Dress the Dead. No shit. He was. He was here. For no, no. Me. You're. You're talking. I'm talking Peter from Hypocrisy. Oh, Peter from Hypocrisy. Yeah, you're talking Peter and, Dalving. Yeah, oh, Peter I know Peter Dalving too. I, I I talk to him occasionally, um, but uh, yeah. So. Um, Fans, fans, they're 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 there, and I'm one of them. They're, but I am too, and that's and I get that, and I totally understand where they're coming. But again, they don't know you, like you said, so they look at you and see this, uh, yeah. you know, and this. this well, it's hard to sing "Exodus" with a smile on your face. No, you don't sing "Exodus" with a smile. If he's yeah, fucking, it's better You're be a fucking. You're singing about fucking smile. Satan and the priest fucking kids. Exactly. And exactly. Did you, did you ever do? Uh, did you ever do uh, uh, the song about the Catholic Church? The fucking. Uh, Altered Boy? Do you guys ever try that? We one? haven't done Altered Boy either. Oh, that's a good one. That is a good one. Though. I know the song. It's yeah. it's great. Dude, I love that. You know what that. the worst, the hardest song that, that from my era is "Burn Hollywood Burn." We've never played that either. And we've fucking Lee won't even. Lee says he doesn't get it. Lee won't even. He won't even attempt it. Oh well, then if he won't get, then we will never even play it. Attempt it. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's kind of how it goes sometimes. How the fuck we recorded we don't get it to... too? It was just like, all right, let's just fucking. You know what I mean? But we did. Uh, dude, the. My 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 greatest moment was Slim's. We played, we played. Uh, what's the song on fucking? It's like a ten minute song on fucking Exhibit B. We did it live. Iconoclasm. No, it's longer than that. 
Oh, fuck, I don't remember the name. Oh, no, Exhibit B? Yeah. Beyond the Pale. No, we played that all the time. I love that song. Yeah. Oh, man. It's not Now the Death They Come. That's on show. Oh, I can't remember it. Whatever. It the Sun is My Destroyer? Yeah. Yeah. The Sun is My Destroyer, yeah. right? My favorite song to sing because I, I did the death metal all the way to my own voice uh -huh. and I did it like and I did it on purpose that's like, one of my favorite ones you do actually so that's song we did it once live we did it twice live twice no tw twice live and it was it was fucking she only got to play it twice because we do that every once in a while we go we play a three then the this one didn't really go over that well and then we just dump it and it's yeah. like you know I love that I, no wait a minute give it a <laughs> chance wait, 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 fuck. come on give me a break yeah, dude, that middle section of that song is my favorite man it's like that bluesy fucking and then I get to yeah I am your god here man it fucking yeah did you write that or did Gary write the lyrics Gary wrote the lyrics I wrote the ballad I wrote the lyrics to the ballad and I wrote the ballot lyrics to Children Were Worthless God and Karma's Messenger. And, um, so you did one or two a record then, basically? Yeah, you yeah, I did two on Exhibit B. I forget the other one. I forget the name of the song. Uh, but yeah, which was an honor, man. Fuck, yeah, man. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I shouldn't have been doing this. I was just I was a lucky fan, dude. And I was grateful for every moment. Well, I mean, I think destiny has everything to do with th things like that. You know what I mean? And that's because I... I, again, I had to take care of my family yeah, at that no, point, yeah. and so things. Yeah. So it was. It came, it came to that that point, um, and and then we were kind of talking a little bit about playing live. Let's before we go into because uh, I want There's another one I want to talk about mm -hmm. uh, before we talk about atrocity. Talk about playing live with Gary, because you play guitar with him every. You'd like lean over and play yeah. guitar. So. Uh, so I do play guitar. Matter of fact, there's actually one. He never lets me do. I never get to do that. I know. Uh, there's one cool. Video. He lets me kick his pedals, yeah. and thank you for yeah. that because now he uses that to well. If he makes his tech do it, but if his tech yeah. doesn't, he'd be coming going. Central. What? No, I don't think he's beast, do no the yeah, wall. but no, but a couple of them, and yeah. he'd be like, do the No, he'd be like, Duke used to hit my pedals, <laughs> kind of like that thing. I'm all really. It started like, because yeah, it I'm started because he was on the, yeah he was on the other side of the stage one time, and I was like, well, I'm here, I'll fucking hit that, and good, I'll do it. And that's how it started. Oh, because yeah. when I my my and, one of my initiations back in, I guess, was to be his fucking <laughs> button boy. So I mean, for yeah. the whole set, and so he could be in the I middle, totally, so he could have the yeah, spotlight said, for a second. Wow, yeah. yeah. So I. I give it to him. You know, we're the singers. We get all the pussy. We get Believe all the money. We get all Believe the me. yeah, yeah, cred. all of that stuff. All of the, all of the every in, in that order too. By the way, all the border. But um, I mean, you know, and, and then we were talking before we came back on camera. You know what about I really annoy Gary. My favorite was <clears throat> I'd wear my Vans. That that used to drive him nuts. I wear my the checkered, checkered ones. Vans. Um, I'd wear a hockey jersey, right? And then other times, my cord would end up near his pedals. You know what I mean? Where it would just be near it. And he would try to kick it out of the way. And it would be a cord, and I'd move it. And he would try to, because he didn't want to stand on a cord while he was doing his solo. For whatever reason, it just. Like so. his wah pedal, he wants, right. No, no, any pedal. If he was standing near his pedals, he didn't want a cord near him. So I would do it on purpose. I would, I would, and I only did it once in a while. And it was just something to make myself yeah, giggle. The, yeah, I don't The other one cord. was, I would get, I get real sweaty when I sing. And when they're doing solos, they can't move. And I would go up and I'd fucking lean on them and I would just rub Try my sweaty them. shit all over them and they would and they would be like get the fuck off me and fucking and I would just, oh, dude it was Hot. the best it was I'm, the best. i don't want to fuck them up on their solo <laughs> song i always, them, get, I always get afraid to bleed into them like fucking fuck that you know what i mean dude, it started i started playing with lee on shovel headed kill machine there's that middle section jump 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 so lee i would i would bring him a beer and i would fucking do that and then i started doing it for gary and then it just became a thing that we just did and the crowd would like go. They fucking love. Yeah, it. they so did. Like, oh, they do. Yeah, so that was just one of those things. And you know, the the hardest one of the hardest things was like when you have like, do you guys ever play uh, uh, like the so, like a when like they do like where there's like a two or three minute section where there's no vocals, and I would just go stand in front of Gary's amp and just fucking just you know just because there's nothing. I, to I do. walk off the stage during the, uh, the part in Death Anthem and it goes. Down, no, no, yeah. no. no. I, I never walk really, up I, 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 was, I, I used to go fuck with part. Tom. I would talk with Tom. 
Did you guys ever do Forward March? That was on Tempo of the Dam. No. They have like a four, eight minute lead section, and I'd go fucking make a sandwich, take a shit, yeah. come back, and <laughs> they still fucking wouldn't be done. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> fucking. <laughs> yeah. But I, I've learned over the last couple of years to start doing that because I feel like I'm like, I'm just sitting here for. Yeah. Five minutes doing nothing but banging. I would you know go just. I mean? I'd go talk with Tom. Uh-huh. I would just fuck with, jump up on the monitor or the riser and fuck with Tom, uh-huh. or I'd go talk with Lee or whatever, or whatever the fuck they were doing. I don't know. I never. But it was fun, dude. It's a fun gig. It's fun. It's just yeah. fun to yeah. to do. But I mean, um, so when you um, when you made mistakes, did you get your foot kicked? How does that work for you? The first time he, he, he kicked me my, in the ass, oh, and I was like, he, I was like, don't do that ever again, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've gotten that a few times, but it's more he will come to me and kick my foot on the side. To yeah, me. that well, they, but the after only, that they find. I'll but, look over and he'll be going like this, and I'm trying to sing, and I know I'm off, but I can't understand you because if you see that I'm singing, then I can't talk and listen at the same time. Yeah. So, like, I know I was, you're yelling at me. I yeah, know, I know you're mad. I mean, what I the said, fuck you want me to do about I know, it? I'll figure it I know out. I'm gonna, <laughs> I know I'm going to do a penalty shot yeah, later or yeah. whatever. You know what I mean? It's a disappointed stepfather yeah, look. So, That's what he gave so, me all yeah, the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's funny. But I'll tell you what. Uh, very fortunate to be ever to play and be able to compose music with that man for as long as I've been able to. And I'm yeah. sure you could say the same yeah. thing for that time to, to see that... Um, he is the real deal when it Dude, comes down were, to it. I mean, guitar I know you've playing, had him. vocally, uh, lyric writing, producer. He's oh, just fucking he's stage get lead playing. He really knows what he and wants. He's a fucking I mean? sweetheart. And he's yeah. just a yeah, very he's, sweet yeah, to everyone. You know, you know and so. he's a very, um, he's very empathetic, and he's very just very you know, much just, so. And you know, he's very family you know, man. Loves yeah. his family, and it's yeah. like you know, he hates his dogs though. I don't get that. He doesn't have dogs. He needs dogs. That's what I keep telling. Him. He just bought a new house. I go, you need a dog for that new house. You know what I mean? No. Uh, I was only fucking with him. Uh, no, Gary's, uh, yeah, Gary's, the, I know you've had them. Those moments on stage, there was a moment. Like, there were moments, you know, you, it's hard to tell somebody who doesn't do it, for who's never done it professionally, what it feels like when you have those moments where it all comes together and you can shut off bad monitors, bad lights, bad sound, and it's the five of you, and you're locked into this thing, and you, you're you all in it, and you all know you're in it, and you and it's something that's that's just, that's I guess that's, it's what like, like people that play golf, they say, oh, you all come back from one good golf shot, man, and we would get those, you know, repeatedly every night, because, you know, like in the tour, when you first start, you're, by the end of the tour, you're on fire. You're, you're a machine. Fuck, yeah, the you're first fucking, week, the first yeah. three days, you're like, Ooh, yeah, and you're you know. playing, but your songs are faster and they're sure. on point and they're better, and you're starting to create, you know. And uh, that's one of the things that that I carried over into Generation Kill was we were doing shows and we were doing a bunch of live shows before we recorded the songs. So we would write songs and have the luxury of playing them live before we recorded them. So we would we would work out all the kinks and we would change the spots that didn't work and we were able to uh you know just you know use the you use that energy to, to understand oh so when we went in the studio we knew what we were doing like we were we didn't fuck around we just kind of knew okay that worked and that worked and then we did a whole fucking tour without even having a record contract and got it at the end which is you know um it's one of those things that i wish i had gotten the opportunity to do with exodus because it was, you know even though I think uh, as brilliant as, as Gary is in the in the formula that they have, um, it was it was always it was always done. You know what I mean? It was yes, like, it's, learned, it's there's no like like when you first get into a band, like, like when I was in Legacy, and and the first album is all the songs that you played in the clubs for two years. You know, so you know those songs yeah. back, and you really get to season those songs, and then you get into a band, and you get on this. Even back in the '80s, we were doing a record every year, or every other year you don't get the luxury of being able to do that. So yeah. you have to te- kind of force yourself to yeah. learn them on your own, then learn them in the f- what four week rehearsal before the very first tour. And then the right. first songs. And that's kind of, yeah. unfortunately, like you said, it's, it's kind of a sad thing, but it takes that, that, yeah. that, that the other way is better. The seventies is that's the way they had to do it. The exactly. 70s. All Same the rush way, records yeah. were done. They wrote those records right, on the road, on the road while yeah. they were in, in their, in their time. Yeah. Like in their fucking warm up time for in the yeah. afternoon. So the, what was cool was, was taking the, especially the bail off songs and making them like a little bit your own, like changing them just a little bit, but keeping those little nuances that he did, 
You know, that was one of the things that he did that I didn't incorporate in my own, but I appreciated it and I would do it, but never on purpose. I don't know, never I'm going to, you know what, he would just go up for no reason. I, I kind of, I'll do, you know, like, but it's eight, as well as worms. <laughs> Nature's pin you on yeah. the <laughs> desert floor. Right. No, your hair's cuisine. Yeah, I do the I, same I, thing. I, yeah. There were certain things I did, but I didn't incorporate it in my own. I, in my own, I just, you know, I didn't, you know, I got it. You know, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, taking a little bit of your style, a little bit of his style, a little bit of fucking Hetfield and a little bit of fucking Tom Araya, and a little bit of fucking Phil and just kind of, and that's, you know, growing up on all that and having that all in my, in my brain, but I didn't go out and say, well, I'm going to do this like Hetfield or I'm going to do right. this like, I just, I just did it. To, I did what the song needed, I thought, and I thought that I did it according to the, to the lyrics. If the lyrics were angry, I sang them angry. And if they, you know what I mean? There was, there I do was, the uh, same. I kind of feel know, the same way. And I know. think Gary is a good director of that too, mm -hmm. Rob. And I mean, I think he knows cause you know, we just finished the, the, yeah. the, the, least, the, the, the recent one. And he was very hands on with the vocal tone that I was using on a lot of different things. And so I, I think that, um, again, I have an idea how I hear it and there's an idea how he hears it. And I think we work it together, but I think that, I, to be honest, I needed that because I don't want to get one dimensional with it, you know. And I was like, yeah. "We'll do this, and then we'll do this on top of it." Like, well, huh? and then well, I sometimes did it and you know, like, yeah. even even by the way, sometimes thrash. There's not a lot of move. There's not a room for movement. There really there's, isn't. There's, it's, you, the words are fired off, and they're da 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 and da da da. And that's what it is. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. And that's, and you know, one of the things that that Generation Kill did for me was it gave me the outlet to do other stuff. So, Andy Sneap. So if that record, so like, so Gary said I can write that song. So Gary never heard it until I did it the day I did it in the studio, and he was sitting there, and and Andy was, uh, they weren't sure, but Andy was like, it's gonna work, right? And those are the, those were the first, I think I did it like maybe like ten times, and he goes, we used, and he told me later, he goes, yeah, we ended up using the very first one because it had the most emotion in it. Uh -huh. So, you know, um, but I was. I was actually a little bit terrified, not terrified, but I was actually just hesitant to bring that to the exit. I would table. have been, oh, I would have been it totally. Just, yeah, but when it was done, Andy said, and he convinced Gary, he goes, leave it. It's fucking killer. It is and, killer. So. And, it, and and to me, like, I think if, if, you, if you're going to ask me and I'm looking at the records from, you know, from the, the being the previous singer and looking at him, Shovelhead was like this. Yeah, <laughs> totally. In your face. Yeah. No, 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 no. And then the Exhibit A had had some really brutal flavor to it. And mm -hmm. and I, when I heard Children of a Worthless God, when I heard the chorus, I was like, Dukes did that? I'm like, why isn't he doing more of this? Yeah. I would have been, I mean, to be honest, when I heard it, I go, I would have never, I'd give him all that because to be, I would have never attempted that. Me, would I know what I can do yeah. vocally? I would have never tried that. And it works so great. He did so it on great. a good day to die. Yeah, a little bit. And I got to say that I wasn't all that comfortable with that. Although I love that song. Yeah. I, I just wasn't all that comfortable mm. with that. Then, And I felt that, like you said, the Exodus needs to be, mm, yeah. you know, like then. And I didn't yeah. feel that that, although I do love Good Day to Die. And yeah. I don't, and I love, you know, the song, the lyrics were very personal to me. Right. And so uh, I, I, it, it had a lot. But when I started, when I heard that, I felt that by Exhibit A, you had now really found yourself in the band on your own, and those and all those songs were new. This was now your band, and you well, bring sang quite bring, well. I think bringing Tom in solidified that. Also, I think bringing Tom back was was key to that whole process. And then also, you know, have you ever read uh, Malcolm uh, Gladwell's um, uh, book that, about uh, you need like ten thousand hours? To, no. it's mm. so basically you need 10 years or 10,000 hours to be a master at something and when I'll so, agree with that though so like so like the Beatles they cut their teeth in Hamburg uh, for 18 months being the house band playing for 10 hours a day for right. fucking 18 months uh -huh. and they did 10 years of touring in 18 months and that's uh -huh. why the Beatles when they first started they were like this bubblegum shit band 
which I can't stand. But by the time they got to fucking Let It Be, man, they were fucking. Oh, yeah. They were, it was it, the game White and Change. Albums, Sgt. Pepper. They, yeah, they had the Game and Change. Magical Mystery right? so, Tour, Yellow Sun. And that's what, oh, that's what it does. Shit. So by me touring, you know, like coming out of the gate, like, you know, I mean, and, and this is like an amazing risk that Gary and the boys took, bringing me into a situation that I had never been in before. And just for whatever reason, I, I personally think it's they were just fucking lazy and didn't feel like going through the fucking tapes that they were getting for people to audition. I think that's what it was. I think it was pure laziness. Because it wasn't the fact that I walked in and was like fucking mind blowing. That didn't fuck. That wasn't the way it was. It was, it was, I think they just, or. Or they clicked with you, like you said. And, yeah, and, that part of And it they too. felt with it. And, and you know as well as this band, you know, as I do, that, you know, we're all very close. There's no, you're not going to be in this band and be the fifth member that sits out everybody kind of does everything except for jack man thing. fuck jack oh, fucking jack i love him that's my boy did a great job on the new record by yeah. the way he yeah. did he was he, he did he no, really nailed it. he's been he's actually you know because back in the day i mean and don't i take nothing away from rob mckillop he was the original bass yeah. player but if i could have had jackie on those jack albums oh my god me and jack oh, man me god. and jack we li i lived at his house for four months when uh -huh. we made that record and we hung out every day. We on tour. We hung out. Where did you record the, Atrocity? So, the first one. The first Exhibit one. A. We did. Uh, Not at Wands this time, right? No, Andy came in. We did it at uh, where? Where did we rehearse? Oh, at at Soundwave. Soundwave, but the old building. Right, Al's, they, Al Lucchese's old yeah, studio. Not the one where the rehearsal space is, where Faith No More is, the other building, because the rehearsal spot was... Oh, that's right, yeah. We were yeah. next to it, so it was Faith and us, so that was uh -huh, next door. Right, right, right. And then in the other building, we yeah, set up we set up these three rooms, and I did it all there. Oh, I, I was see. much more prepared for that record, too, because like, like I said, I came in, I was working, and then all of a sudden I came to LA on, on my motorcycle, and then boom, did the record, you know what I mean? And um, How much time in between Shovel-Headed Kill Machine... And Exhibit A, did you guys, did you take any time off when you came back home or did was Gary writing it? Dude, we were tour? fucking. Did you come like boom, boom? We, we, we toured and toured and toured for fucking two years, I think. Yeah, two years. Just toured everywhere. And I, you know, I got to go all over the world, man. It was amazing. Wow. So, you know, me and Jack, because Jack didn't drink or not much, um, and I didn't drink, so the rest of the boys would get fucked up after the show. I'd go to bed. I would just put on earplugs or headphones, and I'd read a book, and I'd go to bed. I did spend. I, I read a lot on tour, man. I would I would bring ten or twelve books with me on tour because you couldn't get them in English in Europe. So I would stuff my bag with books, and I just read. But me and Jack would go. We would go everywhere, man. We went to all these castles, and we yeah, would he go loves to, that type of stuff. So we exactly. would go. We went to Coliseum. We went to. I went to Morrison's grave. I went to fucking. I went. We. I did something every day with Jack. We were always going on adventures and, and going and checking out something cool, and uh, never did we like sleep in every once in a while. But you know, we just we were all about that, and then um, so me and Jack were always real tight on on tours, always you know, and then um, and then of course then there were the the late nights without this. You know what I mean? Uh, if I can. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and I didn't drink, but I would, you know, I would watch Lee put everyone to sleep. Everyone. And then I would sit with him till 8, 9 in the morning, 10 in the morning sometimes. Me and That's Lee were, me and Lee. So me and Lee were the, I was the tightest with Lee after, you know, 10 years. We're going to talk about touring for Exhibit A because now you have... Two records under your belt. You, like you said, you guys have toured for two years. You're, you, you're, I, I would say your comfortability is, 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 you know, in your confidence is probably, you know, you're, you're there. You've been doing this for a while. Yeah. Talk about that tour because there were some things that happened on that tour that uh, <laughs> <laughs> that so, happened sometimes. Right. So it, it, it was honestly, it was a lot. It, it, having Tom come back was was major, right? So the first tour we do in the states with with Tom. We start, we do a lot more of Exhibit B. We do, you know, we do a handful off. Uh, we do, uh, you know, four or five off Bonded, you know, Fabulous, uh, Toxic. Um, and then we do a couple off Tempo. And then we do all the hits, you know what I mean? We're doing the, going through that. And then now we're doing a bunch of Exhibit B stuff because it was new. So unlike most bands that rely on the old stuff, we were actually we were coming out of the gate with fucking Rays. 
Uh-huh. You know, we were fucking, we were coming out on fire, opening, you know. Um, I had to do uh, children kind of early in the set because of that singy part would kind of, it would be harder to do at the end of the set. So that was my only... Like, we got to do that song three or four. I don't know. We got to do it kind of early. Let's just get it so I don't have to fucking. Worry now, did about Tom that. follow you up? No, not. Because he follows me up on that when no. I do it now. He, he did the last. Like, he, you know, because Tom loves singing. So, right. But, um, so he would do it. But I, I told the monitor guy, like, do not put him in my monitor because he's, he's always, he's not off, but he's off. Well, I would never have him in my uh, monitor, but I could know, I know that he's, he's doing, doing it. it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so uh, he didn't do it with me from the beginning. He added it in uh-huh. as we as later on. Um, so if you notice, you ever watch the Valken, he didn't do it on Valken. Yeah, I, I guess I don't. I, I he didn't was, pay attention he to He didn't it, start but... doing it until about 2010. It was like, you know, around there. He wasn't doing it in the beginning. So so we, we do, now we're on, we were doing more obscure countries. We were going to like uh, a lot of like, you know, Czech Republic. And we were doing... Uh, so we were we were tra- we were doing we did uh, I think I, I'm a little I don't know all the dates but but I remember we were on Creator for like we did like three tours of Creator South America you, you know Asia we did Japan and Thailand and we did all that with them and then we did uh, we were in uh, went to China and then we went to <clears throat> and that was Exhibit B so Exhibit A so we we were doing a lot of uh, like uh, Eastern Bloc Europe. And, you know, you know how the food is there. The food's kind of weird and sketchy in some spots. And so we were in uh, Serbia, and I spent the day driving around looking at all the fucking buildings all bombed out and the bullet holes everywhere. And it was fucking, I mean, some shit you don't normally see. You right. know what I mean? Driving through a fucking worn, torn country. But so the, that day, uh, we were on tour with this band called Biochemical. Um, and, um, they did a killer version of Painkiller, man. I mean, the singer was like Rob Halford. Uh-huh. Was fucking, they did Painkiller to the fucking T. It was great. They opened with uh, the uh, Darth Vader Death March. Da, 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 it was fucking da, da, great. That's All great. metal as shit. Dude, it was really? killer. Yeah. So uh, we're on tour with it. So uh, one night they get, we were in this, in this, it was very third world, which like, you know, the, the dressing room is just this cold blank room. Right, you have the, the 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 so they said, well, there's no um, per diem today, so we're gonna we're gonna feed you guys, you know. And I can't really eat before a show. Right, I can't, couldn't either. Always had to get it to go. So to this day, so like five hours, I had like a five hour window. So if we had we were playing at ten, I didn't eat past five. Me, I do the same okay, thing. Right? I do the same thing. So I eat around four thirty, five o'clock. I said, okay, I got five hours. So they gave us, they were burritos. Wrapped in tinfoil, and they were just you know meat burritos, right? No hot sauce, no fucking you know. It was fucking very. Europe. What was the tortilla like? It was like fucking white bread smushed real fucking. Really? Flat. It was hot. dude. It was gross, right? But you're fucking starving, uh. and you're fucking in. You're in, where the fuck else are you gonna go? Right, right. You gotta eat what they give you. Right. They fed us dog, dog meat. How did you find this out? Because it was. One of the guys from the other band got really sick, and he had to go to the hospital. And they said he had worms from eating dog meat, and that was the only place that we we, we realized that it was sketchy. So before I go on stage, I'm like, I don't really feel good, and I tried to make myself throw up because I didn't want to throw up on stage because you know I don't want to. But um, so I'm wearing I don't know about you on stage I wore. Uh, you know, cargo shorts, no boxers because it was just more laundry to not do. You know what I mean? So I didn't wear boxers on stage. I was commando on stage with a t-shirt. And, oh my! Right. So, because then you didn't have to do laundry. I used to go to Europe for with two months with a backpack, like my backpack that I have in the car. I just <laughs> I would go and just jam, Rob. You're a trooper, bro. <laughs> so I did. I had two sets of the same exact clothes, and I'd wear them opposite days, and I'd wash them in the sink and dry them out, and they would stink so bad, and then I'd rub up on the guys when they're playing. Oh, dude, was fucking, that was gross. So, um, I wanted to bring books. That's what I wanted to bring to, for Reed. So, anyway, we, uh, I don't feel good, and we get to a lesson in violence, and I, I'm, I look over at Lee, and I'm fucking, I'm ready to hurl. I'm like, I'm like, that last lesson in violence, the last one, I screamed, 
and I and I and I shit myself, and it came out of my shorts because it was like uh, it was like it was like rabbit turds. It was like little round pellets. Pellets. It wasn't water. It was a little bit oh. of water, but it was it was pellets followed by water, and the pellets came out and Lee <laughs> Lee was standing there. Dude, I'm gonna throw up thinking about it. <laughs> it makes me gag just thinking about it. So I. I, look at the look on my face. Fucking Ugh. Lee starts laughing. He can't even play. He's laughing. There was somebody filming it with my camera, and I I push past him like get the fuck out of my way because I dropped the mic and I ran off, and I I went into the bathroom and they're finishing the song, and I go into the, I take off my fucking pants and I fucking put them in the sink and I get all the shit off of them and I'm fucking gagging the whole time. And oh then I'm my. like, what? The? And then I fucking clean myself up with a with, you know, water, and I took a big fucking. I took all the stage towels and I was fucking just wiping shit off me. Oh my! And I put my fucking shorts back on and I fucking ran back out. And nobody knew what was up except Lee. When the song ends, and Gary's like, "What the fuck?" And I go, "I just shit myself." And there it is, like three or four rabbit pellets on the stage, and I could see him. And Lee is just. Lee is beside himself. He can't even fucking hold his shit together. He's laughing so hard. And I just like kicked him off and we're, you know, in between the barrier and the stage. Now, did the crowd see this? Did anybody? No, so the crowd didn't know, but then I told them. Yeah, I just. So I guess it was a lead part in the song or that. You know, oh, the, you know listen. Oh, because that's right. Minutes. It goes on. Yeah, that's right. Less so than two minutes. You, again, and then yeah. that's it. And then they just, that's right. Oh, my. <laughs> had that happened before. Yeah. Had it had, did it ever happen again? Uh, no. Let there be blood. Mm. Let's talk about that a little bit. Okay. What was what did you what was your take on it? Because I'm going to say this: when I was in in the early days, there was always talk about Zetro should go back and redo the Bonded, and I was going, "You can't redo Paul's album." To me, it was sacrilege to do that. And right. that in my eyes, I was like. I was like, I would never, I loved singing them live, but to re-record that record yeah. was like, what was your take on that? What did you think? I mean, were you like, wow, well, this is going to be fun for me? Because yeah. I, I grew, I, I mean, I, I mean, I grew up on Exodus too. Right. I was a fan. So it wasn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't look at it either. So originally it was supposed to be done live. That was going to be the take. We were going to play it live at the key club and record it and make it a live record. And then one side of the record would be bonded and the other side would be the new stuff like uh -huh. we were like the other half of the set because we did like we did bonded in its entirety three nights at key uh -huh. club or two nights at a key club and we did other songs beforehand and then did that so we were gonna do it live that was the original plan then you know how plans work out sure they all you know suck balls and then it doesn't happen so it was like okay at the time Ban was was broke. But so was it, it, it because I money thing. Because and I understand uh, that. You know? I, it, it was a money thing, and then you know, and, and then Gary was like, "Well, you know, the production back then was lame. Let's just we'll play him faster. We'll play him like we play him now." And you know, and and you know, you you honor Paul in the right way. You're not, a, you know, you're not. You're, and that's what it was for me. It was for, uh -huh. you know, it was like an honor to fucking do it. And it wasn't like I was. I, I hope that people didn't think I was shitting on them. Most of them. Most I don't think did, so. But, I don't think so at all. Because you know, I mean, and I wouldn't have put that on your shoulders either. Just being being a member, an ex member. Anyway, yeah. I was like, and in that position, I was like, man, I would have never. To me, I was. They, they it came up many times. Do mm -hmm. let's do a couple like a B side. Let's do have Zetro do, and then there were none or something like right. that. I was like, no, it's like that's Paul's opus to me, and I just didn't. I didn't, think it would have been way better if it was live. Because honestly, even though we recorded them differently than they were on the originals, we always played them better live. I like, agree. Now it was like a now it was kind of stifled, and it, there was no there was no banter in between. Like uh -huh. I didn't I didn't do what Paul did. You know, I mean, I was me and, and you right, were you. right, 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 right. Like right. still those songs, like like fucking like like dude, they used to give me chill singing "No Love." Still, to, I mean. To my my deliver Steve is my favorite in the world in to to, to yeah. ever, yeah. and we've barely ever get to play no love anymore. But I love it, and we've only, I think we did bonded since I've been back in the band once, and it's an entirety. Yeah. And I to me, I'll I'll load the whole set with your tunes and Bailoff songs. <laughs> it's it's fun to sing them, dude. To be honest, it's I, fun to sing I them. I feel the same about you, man. I mean, your shit was like, dude. Some of the like, War is My Shepherd is a fucking beast, man. Blacklist is a beast, man. I think we were you upset, know. and I think we we that album was recorded very. Uh, we had gone through this whole thing, 
and never look at us still high. Yeah, well, we were still we were yeah, everybody was still high. But I think we were broke, and we didn't we didn't even have a label. We recorded the record. Some guy paid money, and recorded the record, and then we um we uh. Nuclear Blast signed us after it was done. We we had no label when we so came. Generation Kill. Yeah, them. yeah. Did the record first. And right. Then got a, then got That's signed. what happened yeah. on that. And we were like, and I think that that was just like a balls out, like, you know, mm-hmm. we're broke. We went through this whole thing. We became rock stars. We're now has been. You know what's fucked up? You know up what I mean? It's one of my favorite songs is the one, and you guys never did it live and everyone shit on it. It was. Uh, What'd you do the video for? Not Where's My Shepherd, the other one. Throwing Down. Throwing Down. What a great song. I look great. Good groove to it. And I like that song. And, I, and the fans shit on it. Yeah. yeah I, and and I, don't I, gig, I don't know why. Yeah. Because it's... it's that was it's a got, war dance song. Do you yeah, know that? Yeah, yeah. It it but it had every aspect of a well-written, well-constructed song that had all the... It was like so memorable. And I just... A matter of fact, that was one of the ones that I did when I when I did audition uh-huh. because I love that song. I was like, "We're not gonna play this live. What are you guys fucking out of your minds?" Only on the record, we, on that tour cycle, did we play that live. Good song. It was man. It's a great song. Good yeah, song. yeah, yeah. Sometimes, and you know, the, and the crowd does dictate it. Yeah, if they the, don't like it. You don't play it. I mean, you give it a couple tries, but it, like we tried downfall a bunch of times. Yeah, good song. Just didn't go over well live for some whatever for whatever reason. We tried Chemical. Same thing. Yeah, and I love that love song. Love that song, dude. You fucking. I heard. I heard. I, I, Shrouded urine leads that we, they won't even play it now because they said it just won't go over. It doesn't Is go that over well. yeah. I, I love it. We tried that. it too. We tried it. It's such, such a great song. Yeah, man. Fans are. You know what? This this would be great if there were no fans. You know. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yes, bastards. And as much as we need them, it's like Kevin Smith. I got that from the Kevin Smith movie. This would fucking be a great job for the fucking customers. Now. I would say that um, I, I, I would say one of the defining moments w- w- in your era was was Falcon in two thousand and eight. I mean that that was it was two thousand and eight, right? Yeah, that, yeah. Where you guys did, and I mean, I mean, I heard from other people that Exodus was the best band that weekend. Yeah. I mean, over everybody. So, two things that happened that I remember distinctly was the night before, everyone was really drunk. So that's the a band. Hangover. They were all hungover. That's what I remember. I also, it, because we were on tour with Three Inches of Blood and they were on our bus and everyone was drinking. And then I remember me and Lee walked up to the stage and Lee would, Lee would put his shirt on like right before he went on. But we had all walked up to the stage to see the setup before we got up there because we didn't, we were all on the bus and we didn't, we didn't go because you had to walk across this muddy field to get there. But me and Lee went up beforehand and that's when i saw the crowd and i was like what? and i threw up right then and there i was like well at least i got an hour to go and i got it out of my system you know um big crowd man so we went up there and lee was wearing a support our troop shirt and this we were in in hamburg and the 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 this one of the german crew guys says you know we're just sitting there bullshit and he goes yeah you know fucking german fans really don't like when americans are patriotic because Lee's shirt. Now, he wasn't going to wear that on stage. He, this is just a shirt he was wearing because he wears like a black shirt on stage. But um, I went, oh, really? Oh, great. And I went back and I put on my American flag shorts. It's the only reason I had them on. Oh, really? Because that guy said that they didn't like it. I'm like, well, fuck them. I'm going to go fucking. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I only wore them like once or twice after that. But uh, it, it, but the, it was just a, it was kind of like a fuck you. Like, no, man, like this is bullshit. So, um, but when I walked out, I mean, we knew it was being filmed, but we didn't know that what was going to happen. Like I didn't, I didn't know what was going to there was going to become a DVD. We didn't have any of that aspirations. It was just this is going to be killer. And I knew that after Gates was going on after us. Matter of fact, when the show was over, I ran over to see Hatebreed because they were playing. Yeah, because they do the, the they were the, two the, stages. The, the, right, so I ran right. to see Hatebreed, and I was still in my stage clothes. And then I came back to watch at the Gates, and I was still in my stage clothes because I wanted to watch both. And the the singer from At The Gate says, I can't believe you guys are going on before us. Like, I don't understand this. And we, I think that our management was arguing with the owners of Vak and they were like, like we, like, I thought that our management felt that we deserved more street a, cred. A, like, yeah, a bitter, a, a, right. a, a later slot. In a, but, and I was like, don't matter to me. I'm going to kill when we go out there anyway. I hear you. I didn't give a fuck. I was like, I'm going out there. And so, <clears throat> it, for me, it was one of those performances that so 
like what <clears throat> I'm going to give fans a little fucking secret, right? Lee fucked up. So they had to retract the guitars. He made a couple mistakes. Gary actually made a mistake too. So they retract the guitars and they retract the bass and then Andy fixed it all. But the only thing that's really live is me and Tom. Uh -huh. Because you can't fix drums and you can't fix right. The, well, like, the vocal you, like, you, you can tell. You can tell. You can tell. A little right? bit. So, but they didn't touch those two, and they just did. So that performance for me was one of those. I mean, I had some great nights, but that was that was a great night. And then uh, when uh, when the manager from Megadeth told us we were nobody's here to nobody gives a fuck. I heard him say it. No one gives a fuck about Exodus. I go, oh, yeah? This is like five minutes before we're going on, and this, the crowd wasn't even all the way in yet. They were still online because they were taking forever with security. This is, you know, when and they were shooting a DVD. <clears throat> they were filming every show on the tour. And I was like, oh, yeah, they don't give a fuck about us? I went out, and I was angry, and I was on fire, and we fucking killed. We embarrassed Megadeth that night. Matter of fact... I know for a fact that the crowd footage from the Megadeth DVD is our set. Uh -huh. They went and took took it. Fuck yeah, because dude, <clears throat> they didn't do, they weren't doing what we were doing. Like we were making people nuts, man. We were right. making, you know. That's the Exodus way, Rob. Come dude, on. And that wall of death and and Valken was was just, dude. Isn't which I never came in that I do now because that's I still carry that on from you. You know, <laughs> I do that at the end of every gig now. And I, cool. that was, that's an Exodus thing, but it wasn't mine. I would say that was more because I never did that before, but I got to tell you, I fucking love it. It's my favorite part. So yeah, that you know, one was, that one was, that was like the, that was like the, well, we, had, I thought, I honestly don't remember doing it before that day. It just seemed apropos for that moment, that moment. You know, I think I had tried it a couple of times and, and then it, it would, it would work out, but that show was that was it As a matter of fact when we played england they said we got to england they're like look you can't you can't incite that you can't do it I'm like well why not they go, because people get hurt you like you can't do it if you do it we're gonna pull the sound i'm like oh man but i did it anyway fuck them they didn't pull the sound they just let me do it oh, then they'll threaten that because <laughs> oh he's not gonna do it he's, he's gonna make this. Make it. around 2010 now this is your gonna be your third actual um third Record. original record would yeah. give fourth re record but third actual with the original stuff that you yeah. sing on uh, exhibit b which i mean to me the opening of this record is one of the best exodus openings period yeah. i love out of all the songs that you sang and i i believe you wrote this mm -hmm. the ballad of leonard and charles is fucking one of my favorites to if not my favorite of your era to play and i'm always going but what song do we know? <laughs> Battle of Leonard Joe, can we just throw it in there? It's like, let's open with, I love opening. I think it's yeah. got the greatest opening. Yeah. And, it's, and, a, it's got a good intro because the intro is long. But yeah, me and Lee wrote that together. And it was, it was. Uh, and uh, Now, uh, being in the band now, you've been in the band, well, good five years now. And yeah. this is your fourth record. Mm -hmm. What was your confidence and your comfortability level at this point again? Now it's completely, now this is, you know, you've been in the band, you're in the band, you're the singer. Like you I said, I, I think when you approached I'd... this album, what was it? Was it different from any of the other three? Because uh, you know, now, I, like I said, you've got this under your belt. You've got yeah. tours under your belt. People know who the fuck you are. I think I got better at it, of course, because you. Well, yeah, you know, with repetition. So now I, I think I, I think I found out who who I was. I think I, I, I wasn't I was no longer like maybe at first I was doing a little bit of. A little bit of Bailoff, a little bit of you, uh -huh. a little bit of you know Venom, a little bit of Metallica, but, but by this time, I know who the fuck I am, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm just doing what I'm doing, and I, I'm doing what I, you know, I think was was my in in my world at this point in my world of Exodus, this was my best piece of work, um, and it was uh, it was beginning to end, it was it was it was good for me like there was there was a lot of good songs on there i agree yeah, so, I, and i would say you know. that of, of everything exhibit b is my favorite thing that you d did out, yeah. out of everything i mean top to bottom i yeah. was like wow he's we're gonna take a break once again we're gonna be back and then uh, we're going to be um probably talking around it's coming up to blood and blood out so <laughs> we're going to talk about that we both have a side of that that's going to be quite interesting so uh hang out we'll be back <laughs>
What's up, everyone? And we are back in with Rob Dukes, and then we've kind of been going through, we've been here for a while, going through all the history of stuff. We're coming to the point now where it's 2014. 2013, really, he, Gary started writing the Blood and Blood yeah. Out, correct? Yeah, I didn't hear it until 14. You heard it in 14. When yeah. did you start? When did, when would you first hear it? When they went to the Tom's house. So I came out, we went to Japan. And we... Uh, Thrash Domination? Yeah. We were in Japan. I went and got tattooed by Horoshi 3. Wow. Yeah. By hand, huh? Yeah. How does that hurt? It's fucking awesome. Yeah? Yeah, it's, yeah, it was killer. So I got tattooed. And we do the show. And <clears throat> one night, before the show, me, Lee, Tom... Jack sitting and we said uh, you know we should do this one different we should do this one where we actually rehearse together and we go through the songs like as we as we like a band would do them in the old days like you know go through them and maybe pick apart parts maybe make them better maybe like do it that way <clears throat> and then great plan I agree Come home, fly back out a couple weeks later, and everything's done. Like, we're okay, we're, they're doing the drums, but um, Jack is doing the, the engineering, and Andy's not doing the vocals. And, you know, at that time, uh, not nothing against Jack. I love Jack. I love you, Jack. But the difference was, working with Andy, <clears throat> he could... I didn't have to sing the whole line all the way through over and over again. Um, Jack wasn't uh, able at this time to be able to edit in like a word if I fucked up. You know what I mean? I have to do the, I have to start right, all over. Right. And the descent had started with me. I, I felt uh, a lot of the songs are very repetitious. Now, I could have just kept my mouth shut and just went along with it if I wanted to keep my job, even though. It wouldn't have mattered because the business decisions I think were being made behind the scene with Metal Maria and and Chuck and I I actually uh, in front of everyone like challenged Chuck because Chuck was now managing the band and I was like and it it, it was this is we're we're, all, we're halfway through the record and they said well Chuck's gonna manage the band I go you don't see it as a conflict of interest like a little bit like you don't think Chuck's gonna and I said this to Chuck to his face I said look you you're you're telling me that you're not going to, if you get an opportunity, you're not going to have Testament. You're going to give Exodus to gig. Get the fuck out of here, dude. I wouldn't do that. So I know you're not going to do that. He's like, I wouldn't do that. I go, well, dude, you're not being honest with me. You're not being honest with yourself. And I, it, it caused like a thing. And everyone was mad at me because, you know, the boys don't like confrontation. There's they, no confrontation, right? They don't like that. And I was being that. And, it wasn't the songs. The songs were the songs. Like I thought, BTK was killer, dude. I you you did BT killer, awesome. You know what I mean? And there were there were certain things about it that uh, I saw. I thought that uh, man, I, I don't want to shit on it, but no, it, that's fine. It, it, some of it just seemed like it just regurgitated that we like. I was like, this song sounds like that song, and this song sounds like this song, and I just it started to weigh on me that. And I and like I said, I could have just kept my mouth shut and just played the game and not rocked the boat, but it wasn't my nature. My nature was no, man. We we're better than this, man. We're we need to top ourselves over the last thing we did, and I didn't feel like it was doing that. I felt like it was like actually declining a little bit. It, you know what I mean? In my eyes, it, from In my eyes. from my position, and then you know, but it didn't mean that I didn't give everything I had. I gave everything I had on the vocals, but Jack was beating me up because I was constantly. You know, it was, you know, not able to, like, especially with some of the timing stuff. You're like, you, you know, you've never done it before. And now you're expected to do it for the, for forever. This is the CD, man. This is forever. So did you feel that it's easier at this point or more comfortable for yourself to work with the producer or have Andy in there to kick your ass? Because I worked with Andy and he can kick your ass and pull stuff out of you sometimes that you may not find yourself you did you was that the way you felt yeah i did and i i thought that i thought they were shortchanging us by sending andy home after the drums and i just felt like well man come on man like just let's just 
fucking spend the money and pay them and fucking do it. And, you know, and that's not the path they wanted to go. They, you know, and I, I, it, you know, like I said, man, I, I buried all this. I was angry. Yeah, that's so, why so I know you I, were, and, I, I and was, I'm glad you have, and it's I, so know, great that I was that, angry for about a year, and then when, when or maybe even longer, when Gary called me, you know, because look, man, I'm, I'm fucking now. I'm 47 years old. I, I got married five days before, and yeah. you fucking fire me, and now I have. If I was by myself, if I was just me, I wouldn't have given. I would right. like I would have been okay with it. I was responsible for another human being. Sure. I just moved my entire life from my comfortable. New York upbringing to a place where I know one person right. and I don't even know him that well. I yeah. knew him from touring and like watching him when I was a kid. I knew Roger Moret from Agnostic Front. It's the only guy I knew. And, you know, so, dude, it was, I remember telling, you know, telling my wife, man, I'm just, you know, uh, we're going to be okay, man. It's fine. We're, we're fine. You know, man, I'll, I'll, I'll sell my car uh, and, and uh, that'll get us like a year rent and we'll be fine. We'll, we'll be okay. I'll, I'll figure it out. We'll be okay. But in my head, I was fucking terrified. Right. And my career ended. I felt like they took something from me that I earned, that I deserved, but I was looking at it wrong. I was looking at it from that. I didn't deserve anything. I didn't earn anything. I was grateful to be there. And I tried to do the right thing. I, I wrote a, I remember writing a, a statement and putting it out there, you know, I was grateful. For, I was grateful for going to a hundred over a hundred countries in my lifetime, playing in front of the millions of people that I got to play through over ten years. I mean, sure. you know, I was grateful for every opportunity that was given to me. This was which I it was. I was honestly grateful, but it was also I was I was angry, and and and, and I had every right to be angry. You know what I mean? It was like, and it wasn't like like. But I wasn't able to see it for what it was until a year later. It took me a year. And the the truth was, is that my part in it, had I been honest from the beginning, and I had said, because I didn't, there were times when I didn't want to rock the boat, was we are making fucking mistakes. And if you want to fucking, if you guys all want to go to this next level that you all talk about, then let's put our fucking money where our mouth is and and use, and do it the way change it the way we're doing it you've done it this way all this time and you've always gotten what you got right but if you bring in say you change the game and not, nothing against Andy but if we bring in Colin Richardson bring in fucking Zeus bring in somebody that outside the game who had had his own ideas of, of looking at things and maybe corral some of the, the the chaotic stuff that was going on and maybe go, no, you know what? The song does sound like that song. Maybe we should fucking take this riff and uh, and just, you know, let, let producers do what they do. Let, let you know, a guy like Bob Rock come in. And, you know, it's like we do with Metallica. They're not saying that. Mutt Lang, people like that that made bands because of their producer skills. But it wasn't, it, it was, it was take, it would have been, I thought it would have been awesome for somebody like Colin Richardson or Zeus to come in and take Gary Holt and sit him down and go, this is awesome, but we can make this better. Let's try this and try that. And that's what I thought, that's what the plan originally was. And to not have that happen, I should have just, I mean, it's hard to go, oh, I'm glad I did what I did. Man, I, I mean, I lost my gig in Exodus and it was a fucking fun job, man. It was, it was fun. But that being said, as I sit here today in front of you, I'm glad that I, everything worked out the way it did. And I was glad that Gary called me a year later, and I and I spoke with him, and and he was legitimately sorry. I knew he was, and he said, "I want you to come to San Francisco," and uh, and I was like, "Well, how does that feel?" Like it was it was Zet's idea. So, because of you, we kind of I came to the chapel. You actually weren't there. They thought that I was going to be anti that because they were like, "Well, let's do this chapel show, and we're going to get Rick." And I go. Well, then if you're going to get rid of it, why don't you call Dukes and have him come out? And they all looked at me like I was I had the plague on my face. And I'm like, dude, I'm all, yeah, why not? I go, I don't care what everybody else thinks. I, I had nothing to do with this. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. So, And I like singing his songs. I think, honestly, it would show all the Exodus fans, and which it has, that, you know, there's no bullshit. And then this Exodus is... I am, I have, there's Paul's area and then there's my early area and there's your area and then there's my area again. It's just, 
there's it's all exodus you know dude, what i mean dude, it's, there's i'm no... the fucking blaze bailey fucking well, you keep saying that you've said that before fucking but, uh, bailoff was Deanna. i'll tell i'll tell you what dickinson and i'm fucking i'll tell you bailey, what dude. i'll tell you what <laughs> I don't think Blaze Bailey made an impact on on the Maiden fans that you made on the Exodus fans. So so that I I I'd have to put you, you know, up honestly, a little higher I, than that. I'll, you know? I'll be honest with you. I've never heard Blaze Bailey sing once. I don't even honestly. Know. I have no idea what he his says. albums with Maiden. Are I don't know. Good. They're, they're heavy. I know John Bush yeah. is awesome. I'd, so I, I tell I, I, my favorite. But John I like Bush Joey is my too. favorite. I, mean, uh, Paul, I love Joey, yeah, but Paul's my favorite fucking Iron Maiden singer. Yeah, I mean, mean I love him. I love him too. And Bond, come on, Bonzi. You know, even though I take nothing away from Brian. Brian Johnson. No, I love the guy. Now, listening to Blood In, Blood Out myself, because again, when I was going in to do the vocals, I learned off of your vocal tracks, mm -hmm. and I felt that your albums before had so much more to it vocally. Did the did did you feel that the songs didn't grab you, so your vocal performance was not as... I mean, I th I thought Exhibit P think, was your opus almost, and then the very next record, it was like you didn't want to be there, or it, it seemed there like was it. so that that assumption has been said to me a bunch of times. You know, even even Lee said it. He goes, "Your just heart wasn't in it," and I go, and that's you know, my ego, which I don't have a big ego. It's not like I'm an egotistical dick, but um, <clears throat> I can tell you that. When I was in the microphone, I was giving my best. I was giving all I had. It, the, what I felt inside was that the songs were, were, weren't as good. The, like, the songs, like they, they, to me, they felt rushed. I thought the, some of the lyrics felt rushed, and I thought well, it was one of those things, you know, you know me and Gary look at, 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 at music very differently and i think that's why we kind of worked whereas gary will write the lyrics before he writes the music and he fits it in where i write the music write the melody and then fill in the words to the melody that's what and, how i do it and that's so exactly how and I it do. just in in a lot of times for me it felt like you know it just felt like you know it was just and it, it nothing against I mean, it's hard to say it without sounding like a dick, but it just was, it was very, like, I was, I remember singing one song going, like, dude, I, I, this is that other song, you know, and then hearing the lead going, that's the lead from that other song, and that's, and I think that alone, leave, trying to take my ego out of it, maybe my heart wasn't in it, you know, I mean, I, I wish that it wasn't, but I'm, like, again, it's, at the moment, I, I knew I was giving all I could, but there were, there were, the factors against me was one, I didn't think the material was as strong as what we'd already done. I wanted it to be better. It's like, it's like setting a bar for yourself and then, you know, and then not giving at least that measure, you know what I mean? And, and I thought that, you know, as, as, as much as I love Jack, he wasn't Andy Sneap and working with Andy, there was, there was something to, to working right. with Andy that he's a producer. So that knows. pulls it out of me. I mean, he would, yeah. dude, I would sing, I remember talking to Halford about it, dude. He, cause he did, he did Halford with Priest. Yeah, he's, he's he still, did, he yeah. Made, he maybe do fucking 10 fucking takes of each line. You know, when you do 10 takes of each line, and then he fucking pieces them together, and, he, and then then you get back something, and you're like, wow, that's the way I sang that, huh? Cool. No, it wasn't. It was the way Andy put it together. Put together, right. You know, because you true. Do, you know, and then and then all of a sudden now you have a template. Well, now I'm going to go do that live because that's better because Andy knew what the fuck he was doing. Right. You know, but now you're just leaving it to me raw. You know what I mean? And I thought not having Andy there for the vocals made me, it made me mad. It, not mad. It just made me like a little disheartened, I guess, because working for two albums with Andy, I, I knew what to expect. Okay. No matter what template I was given, I knew that Andy was going to make me do it the right way. And, 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 and when we were doing it, it wasn't, it wasn't that I was singing with a room full of Christmas decorations. Uh, yes, a, that's a, what a, I sang to those same decorations. You know what I mean? And it was like this, there was, it was white. There was no ambiance. There was no, you know, I wanted to, when I do the Generation Kill record, dude, I was doing it in candlelight. I was doing it like with red lights and I was, there was a mood. There was a, there was a, I, I don't do it in daylight, some, man. Some singers need that. I'm one that I can go into the Christmas ornaments and if that's the job and I can do it. At the time, I, you know, at the time, like when I sang Exhibit B, you know what was in front of me? You ever seen that picture of the the atomic bomb going off? Yes, yes, and then just I, the, the it's cloud, a, it's just the yeah, cloud, yeah, right? Yes, I had that right in front of me the whole time. Right, big. It was like a it was like a thirty six by forty five, and I just stuck it on the wall, and I was like, yeah, that's what the fuck I want to look at. When I sang Shovelhead, 
I had a vial of Paul's ashes. Right oh, on, really? Right on, a, right on the chair in front of me, underneath my mic. Yeah, they were on the, when we just did the thing, they were on the, the, the soundboard. Yeah. yeah. Tell us what you're doing now. I've had you here all fucking day long. Tell us talk, Tell us what, what you're fun. doing, where we can get your stuff. And, okay, uh, so working on a new Generation Kill record. Which we're going to try to release. You're going to release it digitally, right? Digital, and then we're having, uh, so uh, I'm probably going to do vinyl and all that extra shit through someone else. So I don't know, I don't know what Nuka Bass is going to do. Right now it's a digital. So it's coming out. When's your guys' record coming out? Not till summer. Ours is coming out like, like late spring, right? So, so here's I, I was gonna. I talked to Wayne before, and I was gonna. I was gonna wait till after, but I'm gonna just say it now because fuck it, because we're in that. We're feeling it. So I think it would be awesome since we both have records come out. If Generation Kill opened for Exodus, and I came out and sang a couple songs. I would welcome that, and I think I don't I want mean, you to say because you feel obligated. To say no, 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 no. Honestly, and you're and I to tell you this, you're welcome. Anytime we play, I will go. Yeah. Rob's gonna sing these songs. I would love that. <laughs> yeah. But if we went out, I would love you to come up every night, every night, and do two, three. I don't care. Yeah. Doesn't matter. I think it's a good idea. I think, I think the it's fans a, would fucking love fucking it. Fucking A. And it helps Mount Generation. Plus Kill. plus it, it 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 you know, other than Paul who can't be here anymore, it brings both of those eras of Exodus together yeah. and I have no problem. And you know who would welcome the shit out of that? Gary and Lee and Tom would love to fucking do that. So. Not Jack though, man. Fuck Jack. Yeah, Jack would love to do it. But you know what? Those guys, you know, because they're the ones that are pulling the strings. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, Thank you for this. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you for coming. It's been yeah. a great day. Yeah. I hope um because again, I get so many requests for so many different people, and people want to want to think what they want to think. And I was like, "Would you people? Are you kidding me? When can we? Get, Rob, don't live up here. How can we get him up here? I'd love to have him." And this has actually been one of the best converse conversations because I don't call this an interview. This is a yeah. conversation. That no, it was, yeah. Have, and, and and I'm this one of the best ones I've had. So thank you for coming in. Absolutely, man. Fucking a. I, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And hopefully we can get more stuff like this. And um, and listen, when when the, when the when the new albums come out, when when the Generation Echo comes out, when the Exodus album comes out, look, the music industry has been devastated by COVID and and the way the world has has become. And you know, a lot of us, like you know, like you guys and everyone, has just been hurting. So, if the fans. If you want us to keep doing music, and I know that you do, and 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 want us to keep producing uh, stuff, can you please just spend the money and buy it? Like you know, buy it on on iTunes, and it's, you know, look, I know what a cup of coffee costs because I drink coffee every day, and I know that it's three cups of coffee that I drink is an album, and I don't steal music. I buy all my music. In I buy way. my movies. I, I you know I go I, so if, if you guys can just do that to help us, and I mean it's just it's not even help us. It's just it's just to, to let us keep doing it. It'll keep you going. It'll keep going. We've hit a lull in yeah. in the world, in, in in the entertainment industry especially, mm -hmm. and it just even before that it wasn't great. I mean, we want it. We well, nobody. It's because we're metal, man, and, and metal is the last thing they look at. We need all of the fans to continue to be supportive of this and just keep buying the records and hopefully, like Rob was saying, we'll do an Exodus generation kill thing and i would welcome you on stage every night i would sing with you and let you sing by yourself too i yeah. think it'd be great oh, yeah. be great for the fans because especially now they haven't been able to go to live shows <clears throat> and what a great way to what a great way to come back you know what i fucking mean and fucking give me it'd be fucking killer so we just need to make the powers of be have that happen my man thank you so much thank you sir you guys, you know what to do. Leave me comments, and I'm sure you're going to be leaving me a ton, and we will be reading them. And, of course, subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And if you like this type of this exclusive things, we can try doing more of this type of stuff. But, uh, shit, we'll see you real soon inside Zetro's Toxic Vault. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Awesome. This is great.